just do it. Do you, mean you can nod you instead of yes. chewing. <laughs> I don't know if I need a motion or not. Um, <laughs> okay, are we good? Okay, um, let's call the meeting to order at uh, 6.03 and let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, so, do we have any changes or additions to the minutes? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, I did. Was Ed coming? Uh, yes, he's, he's going to be late. He's at okay. Weathersfield. Oh, okay. He's at oh, Weathersfield okay. first, then he's coming here. He should okay. be here by. So. Oh, David too. David's not school. coming tonight. David's, David's not coming knows. tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He uh, decided we could handle it without him. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so no causing any trouble. Um, <laughs> so let's. Um, okay, so I'm going to reorder the uh, agenda items. I'm going to go with. The opposite. So we'll do SU name one, radar list two, and financials three. And the radar list will probably get interrupted by financials. Um, actually, you know what? We might do the principal's report. Well, let's do the SU name is really short. So um, for those. Scott, did you say you had something to add, though? No. Oh, okay. I didn't. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, thank you. I might have something to add. I don't oh, know if it's yes. worth it or not. Um, the climate strike is on Friday. And oh. so I don't know if the school is being asked or addressed around children's excuse, you know, excused or unexcused absences for that. Yeah, we or had a couple go last year to, too. Um, but um, this that's year, our policy or what it is? This well, we called it an excused absence last year, um, and we can certainly do that again. Unfortunately, we scheduled our corn maze trip this for this Friday, oh, like man. months ago, yeah. without having the state. Um, on our radar, so I don't know if any children will choose to go, but they certainly can if they want to. Unless it rains, and then we're going to postpone till the 27th. So, <laughs> but it looks like the weather's pretty good. So it sounds like if they chose to go, they would just get an excused absence. And Unless there's another way to do it. Yeah, no, I think that. That's. I mean, I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think that makes yeah, sense. When they leave for other educational activities, that's what it is. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so the uh, the SU name discussion. Um, so for those of you who have been do to you recent, want to do the minutes first. Oh yeah, hey thanks. <laughs> Call out. <laughs> Thank you, Diane, <laughs> for keeping order. Uh, yes, let's do the minutes. Um, so I would take a motion to approve the minutes of August nineteenth. I uh, second. I guess I first thought. <laughs> um, okay, is there any discussion about the minutes? No? Okay, should we vote on the minutes? Okay. Yeah. All those in favor of um, approving the minutes of August 19th, 2019, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Oops. Well, abstain since I was out last night. Awesome, and thank you for coming up with the word because I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay. Now we're moving on. Um, <coughs> there is no public today, so um, so the SU name. <coughs> for those of you uh, who were not at any of the recent supervisory unions meetings, um, the supervisory union at this point has tabled the discussion, but there was a discussion of um, renaming the SU. And the idea is that um, there's WSESU in Wyndham, um, and we are WSESU, um, and then there's the Windsor Central Modified Union. Next door, mm -hmm. right? Everything. Although you see. Yes. So there's a lot of Windsor, Wyndham's. Um, Washington. Yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of W's and Souths and Easts and directions. And um, so there was a discussion of trying to come up with a name that was uh, more uh, representative of who we are as a community and um, also easier to say and also did not get confused with another acronym on the internet. Because um, Wyndham 
I think it's Wyndham Southeast is also W E S U, but they're dot org and we're dot net, right? Yes, we're dot net. Yeah, and it's it's bad enough that Diane gets phone calls and gets yelled at by <laughs> kids that live in Wyndham. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by parents of kids who live in Wyndham. So, um, and so Woodstock. Uh, and Woodstock. Yeah. So personally, I, it just makes sense to me, but we couldn't agree on a name. Um, of course. And so I was supposed to bring this to our last meeting, but we had too much to talk about. Um, and so the idea being, if you think of a brilliant name, let people know. <laughs> so what were some of the thoughts? So the um, Mount Escutney, but that was pretty quickly taken away because that would be confused with the district. Mm -hmm. um, somebody had the idea of Precision Valley. Um, you know, kind of going with the uh, tooling industry that's along the Connecticut mm -hmm. River. Mm -hmm. um, and that, uh, Springfield has kind of taken that name yeah, already. Yeah, I was gonna say that, they, yeah. I think they have that. Yeah, um, and, and then. taken it for their school district? No, not no, for their school but district, like, but just like. Calls calls themselves themselves themselves. Themselves. They, they already identified. Anonymous with Springfield. Yeah. Um, I didn't know. And there were some other yeah. ones. Yeah. Um, Monadnock, because Mount Escutney is a Monadnock, but the person that suggested that didn't know that there was a Mount Monadnock. Oh, there's nothing left? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then there was a Scutney Basin, even though it's not a basin. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, so really we just everything. Well, we're going to come out like, of our portrait of graduate work. Yeah. That's yeah. actually yeah. a great yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. What about a Scutney Region Supervisory Union? A Scutney Region? A R S U. I like then it's that. not Mount Scutney, so it's not confused with the district, right. but it's Scutney still region. Arshu. Right. Scutney region. Arshu. Yeah. yeah, that's Arshu. true. It's a, little, it's a funny acronym. A-R-S-U. Arshu. 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 Yeah, all right, maybe not. Maybe not. All right. I've already broken it. That's what I did. That was awesome. That was awesome. Shortest name right? I like that the idea that. <laughs> um, what else? I mean, yeah, we're we're on the Connecticut River, but um, you're right. Yeah, the bridge came up as a yeah, some kind of like covered oh, bridge. As you, what about Upper Valley? Upper Valley Supervisory Union. Well, the Upper Valley goes all the way to what? The Bradford. Bradford. There's 16 yeah. towns. Yeah. 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 yeah, we don't want to claim point. anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I see. The, I see the problem. Yeah, <laughs> and so it needs a creative solution. Um, although I really liked yours until we started Sorry. looking at the acronym. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. But there's no definitive date or anything? No, like that. there's it's nothing. It's, it's been tabled. It's been officially tabled at the supervisory union. But the idea is that everybody knows that this is on your radar. And if you have a brilliant brainstorm in the middle of the night, email some people. And you don't even necessarily need to email me. You can email David. You can email like Diane. Like, <laughs> it doesn't yeah. matter. Just let somebody know if you have a good idea. Come up with something. Mm -hmm. And now the kids, too. Should That's do a little fun. yeah polling. That's not a bad idea. We should. You guys should bring that up at your uh, involved. Yeah. admin meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so that was that. One Check. thing that's worth noting is that when you when you Google W S E S U, <coughs> you get um, Wyndham Southeast is the first thing that comes is up. Is the first my, one. And then you get uh, Windsor Southeast Supervisory Union written out. So I mean, it's not that confusing to me when you. That's your first page. Yeah. Google search, you know? Apparently it is. You gotta pay attention <laughs> to the <laughs> details. <laughs> yeah. And sir, I mean there are ways, right, to um, approach Google about the way you line up. You are presented to the world or where you are hey, sponsored. Also I'm trying to think yeah. Wyndham Southeast is which one is that? Is that Brattleboro and Putney and those guys? I think, yeah. I think so. So they were, I mean, they're merging, so they're going to have a whole, they'll probably have a new name very soon. Mm. True. That's the so this may cease to be a problem mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. we, could, we could send him a so we'll note and ask him. We'll if we just hang up, we'll be pleased to change our hands. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a really interesting <laughs> point. If we hold right. long enough. <laughs> yeah, because they're no longer a supervisor well, union. They're now a right clutter it up with them. Okay. So let's move on to the principal's report. Okay, Angie, so just want 
Um, we were just discussing the SU name, huh? and maybe kids could be involved in mm. renaming. So I didn't want to forget. She's the keeper of the admin agenda. Mm. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> I will add that. You think about yeah, it. Yeah, talk to David and see what he thinks. Yeah. All right, so we're skipping to me. Yeah. All right. I think from That's a flow standpoint, totally before. fine. All right, so I shared this out, so you should have it, but we'll go over um, some of the highlights from the beginning of, of the year, which has been a really great start. Um, I don't want to say it too much because I don't want to jinx it. But can we knock on, can we knock on wood every time? But um, So uh, we started here with New Teacher Day at the end of August, which since I've been here, we haven't held it here. It was actually really nice to have all the new teachers here. Craig um, served breakfast and lunch yes, that day did. and it was fantastic, fantastic. Um, so we had the multi-purpose room set up in the morning um, we did our introductions David and uh, Larry and Angie and Karen Karen Wolsey all do a little bit of important stuff with the new teachers and then <laughs> just yeah, orientation yeah basically. orientation stuff not enough time for sure to go over the things that they need to know <laughs> and then Brittany and I had them in the afternoon and went over more important stuff those poor mm -hmm. teachers after a long day of sitting but anyway um, our first day um, then we had our orientation at the SU and I just have a clip for you to watch <laughs> oh god <laughs> So there's a welcome back to all staff, curriculum and tech updates, tra our trauma cohort plan for the year, and then David, um, I hope it works. This is not a problem, all right? Here we go. He wrote a new song. <laughs> he wrote a new one? Okay. <laughs> he gets faster. It continues. Every time. <laughs> Actually, it was really great. A it good was fun. It was, it was I fun. was filming, so I didn't um, yeah. didn't see how many see people were really participating. It looks like a lot. We do have a bit of doing. some some you know. He gets them on board that aren't comfortable yeah. with that. So. Yeah. So it was good. So, um, so. And then um, we came back here. For the, for the first full staff training, and um, we put our staff through some fun, engaging activities. They formed um, Everybody Needs Somebody team, so it's a cohort of three, three people that are just going to support each other each um, all year. We have little walk and talks at the beginning of every staff meeting in our ENS teams. They had to do kind of a great race puzzle solving activity to figure out the theme for the year and then we did um, Kahoot handbook um, in their teams which is really fun so we're trying to model engaging activities <laughs> it was good very positive start to the year I just had to share this photo because I think it's fantastic it's our first day of school we had coffee outside which was really great lots of people stopped to have coffee and um, this is the, one of our families that has three kids in the school. Actually, um, Deb's going to be on the design team. Uh -huh. And um, Maddie, the. Um, she'll be great. She'll be great, yeah. So, so far, not too many scheduling glitches. And we're working on the new behavior logging system, and it seems to be. I mean, we've had a few questions, but overall, yeah, it's going working pretty well. Good. We had our Year of the Book kickoff on Friday with, um, oh, I'm going to forget his name, McDougal. Uh, du Duncan McDougal, this is him. He was absolutely incredible <laughs> storyteller. He's the founder of the organization. Oh. Yeah. I'm so bummed I missed that. Oh, he was fantastic. He had like fifth, fifth and sixth graders like totally engaged yeah. during while well, he's yeah. telling a story, which I just did and not And they started off it's not crazy. as engaged as I, uh, and then they, he just sucked them in. Um, yeah, it was cool. And fantastic. every student got the first of 10 books that they're going to receive this year. And we have other events, yeah, planned for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's great. Even the middle schoolers, there they are, getting their books. 
Um, so a couple of the updates that I'm going to share tonight, one of them is the portrait of the graduate design team is, uh, I think David said we have 80 people total on the design team. These are our reps from Heartland. I'm sure some of them look familiar to you. And we need to pause on this And slide. you need uh, to <laughs> tell me which board member's going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you guys <laughs> took it out. <laughs> I thought so, it was decided I was. Is that what was decided? Yeah, I was, if, 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 yeah. if, you, if you could make the day's work. That so I have yeah. one that I cannot make, and I don't know if that just defeats Well, you're supposed Well, you're supposed to be there for all four. Uh, I know. But, I, I mean... I'll be there. Yeah. I'll play you. I know. I was going to say, if there's... If I mean, I would be happy to pinch hit if that's one I could make, but, I, but <coughs> it sounds like maybe that's not... When we suggested sharing a, something else before, people said, no, that's not a good idea. But if that would work, I'd be happy to... I think I mean we're gonna do what we have to do, right? Yeah. So yeah, so I'm Nikki and Beth. The dates and what the conference I had was and why it was. Enough. So the yeah. first date. Yeah. I don't think I put those in my report. So I'll find November twenty third. Yeah. Community business group set. Yeah, we have a pretty good yeah. um, representation. Who's the parent that you pictured coming yeah. in with three children and then the yes, name? You said Deb Richardson. Deb Richardson. She's here. I'm sorry, what not was your question? Cousin. Do you have no, the rest no, of the yeah, dates? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. not um, my cousin. Yeah. No, she that's the parent that was there. Right oh, we do? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh. Graham's mom is also oh. Deb Richardson. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Deb Thompson. Except Thompson. Thompson. Sorry. But she's, oh, You're right. When I but saw we both, that note, her maiden was name was Richardson. Yeah. So oh. We both are doing. I'm like, so what sorry. are you talking Thank about? Her name is Deb Thompson. I didn't know she was a Richardson. I'm sure you do. Yes. I didn't know that she was a Richardson either. Correcting that. Yeah. So yeah. That's who we just saw walking right. in? Mm -hmm. That was Deb yeah. Richardson, yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm yep. just going to take a picture. So we have a good, we have some so physicians and some reps, state reps. Michelle we have our town um, manager. Yeah, it looks like a It's a good group, yeah. I'm, I'm happy January. with September. I'm reminded about something. I'm oh, seeing yeah. Jennifer right. Knight. Is that, Is that the new yeah. teacher, Jennifer yeah. Knight? Mm -hmm. So I got to admit, I Those was, noted. that went right past this may uh, here it did and when i saw the picture on the wildcat weekly yeah. i was like returning now you know her <laughs> <laughs> she was um <laughs> the night where i mean the name mm -hmm. went right past right it, it was jennifer um <laughs> Bodner. 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 yeah jennifer knight going well so awesome. far all the new staff are doing really well awesome and then we have sydney who has volunteered to come back okay. as a high school student that um, went to Heartland and Maddie Richardson so really excited to have some students on the team and yeah, you so got the dates so October 30th is the only, is the date I'm, I'm actually teaching a class that night. okay I can't get up. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew there was something we have October 30th on. as yeah. one of our dates mm -hmm. uh-huh Night before it's Halloween. Cause some panic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Well, so it wasn't Halloween. Right. That's true. I have October 30th, November 19th, January 14th, and the September 25th one. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's right. So we're excited um, about the work ahead. Where's where is the first one? Windsor, Windsor. High School is Windsor the first Windsor. one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is Officer Paul, our SRO. Big teddy bear of a guy. He really is. He's great. If we if we had to have an SRO, he's pretty much what we were hoping for. Um, so we met. Uh, committee met in early September. We crafted kind of the general role, and he's going to have a kind of a slow start into the school, or um, not necessarily. I wouldn't say slow, but his um, the groups he's going to be meeting with are groups, not individual students for particular reasons, unless a parent requests that. We're going to just start that way. So he's stopping in for lunch, recess, check-ins, working on building relationships with kids, you know, just in a general sense. Um, he's going to be introduced at assemblies. He's actually mm -hmm. on vacation right now for two weeks, but when he comes oh, back... Her other person came in today. Yes, and he has somebody that's covering. I don't for remember him. his name. No. Um, he's um, he's been to two of our safety team meetings already. He's been helping us with a truancy issue. Um, we've had to call him a few times for not huge emergencies, but just for um, kids leaving school property without permission. Um, I will say the one thing I really appreciated, Springfield went into lockdown, I think last week or the week before, mm -hmm. and he, he called me personally and just said, they're in lockdown, you don't need to worry. It was dismissal time. He mm -hmm. said you can dismiss as uh, normal, you know, in a normal fashion. 
which was really I was not yeah. expecting that, which was nice. So, yeah, it was great. And the committee will meet again in like January. January, just to yeah. see how it's going and to see if we want to change the roles. Questions about that? I know that's kind of a Officer Paul's last name. Favro. I always Fav say it wrong. Favro. 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 Long A. Favro. Favro. Because I was, I thought that's what his last name was. was Favro. Yeah. Yeah. How was Windsor, the committee site, meeting? Was that how did that go? Or it, it did went meet more than once. No, we we met one time. It was four parents, um, four staff members, a couple, one student, one Great. one had the date wrong. He thought it was the next day. Uh, Brittany, myself, mm -hmm. Nikki David. was here. David was here. It was a big room. Like, it was. There were a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. But pretty much everybody came to the same conclusion. It was yeah. really, to me, it was interesting. And yeah. like in group dynamic. Yep. Um, people that in the forum were very like, let's have an officer, you know, like even the ones that were like, we need somebody every day, you know, like that kind of mentality mm -hmm. um, adopted the outlook of the people that were like, we don't want an officer at all. And so it was like everybody, yeah, yeah everybody came to yeah. the table pretty yeah. much at the same spot. Like yeah. everybody at the forum heard awesome. everybody else and there was, was very little, it people was, understood other people's opinions before the meeting yeah. even started. Like it was really wow. cool. I mean, it I was thought really it was really cool. yeah. it was positive. I left going, okay, that wasn't that bad. I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was well, because, yeah. because you did it. And yeah. Because people yeah. had a chance to have their, yeah. Yeah. To and have all the work we did ahead of time. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And everyone in the room understood. Yeah. That's great. It just was really, I felt That's really great. good about the community yeah. coming out of that. It was really neat. Nice. Well done, so. everybody. Agreed, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, and I think yeah. we can pat ourselves on the back. If we yeah, I think it was, we went took well. it on the whole thing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not it sure we've had a well. meeting since, no, this is the first one since school started. So yeah. did Officer Paul Favreau accomplish that? Um, certification over the oh, summer? That's right. I meant to ask that. Is that question. now Oh, or God, later, I think or? he did, but yeah. I'm not positive. I'm pretty, uh, I'm I will, pretty positive I will ask him did. for sure. And he's also going to be going to another training. Yeah. What, did he, what was that one about? That um, one was, um, yeah, I, it I sounded mean, really I good. I jumping the gun. I forgot what was announced at that at our meeting. It was either in the late summer or, or this early fall. Yeah. Was gonna do the it was supposed to be in the summer. Yeah, yeah, thank you. That was on my list. Yeah. I will check I like with I him. I remember August, but I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, I remember August as well, but or summertime. Oh, I know what the other training is. He's going to a training on um, specifically on school safety and security. Um, which will be really good so that he can get more insight in terms of like helping us with our safety team and just the building aspect and the drills and things like that. Yeah, he brings an interesting perspective to it and brings obviously things that we don't think about. So yeah. we're, you know, revamping all our protocols to match um, the state's recommendation of uh, I love you guys and the blend of the Alice um, protocols that we're being trained in which we started I don't think I included that but we've had two staff meetings and it's a train the trainer model so Alyssa McDermott our guidance counselor who was a security officer at ESPN she was just like the perfect choice to send to the training yeah I'm not at all surprised and she, she did she <laughs> went um, in June for two days she came back we all had to do an online um, uh, webinar training uh, all the staff and then she did um, a follow-up to that last Tuesday and now we're to the point where we have to start practicing some of the changes which really it's the model is shifting from uh, lockdown where you hide and you're pretty much sitting ducks to the teachers have more autonomy in this in a, in a crisis situation and we communicate out all the information that we can and they, they make the decision and it's either, an, it's an enhanced lockdown which is um, evacuate immediately. Mm -hmm. So if something's happening in the orange hallway, if you're down here, you can choose to just well, run. Door the yeah, um, you can blockade or barricade, mm -hmm. barricade your door and you can counter which is um, 
fight back, throw things, you know, yeah, fight back, swarm, there's a swarm technique mm -hmm. and throwing things in, you know, we're just at the point where at what age level, <coughs> and it's always optional, you would never force kids or staff to do something they're not comfortable with, but at what grade level do we actually teach these things? which is a really complicated question because mm -hmm. we don't want to cause more harm. <laughs> yeah. So we're at the admin level discussing kind mm -hmm. of that because we'd like to be consistent across the board. Yeah. But so it involves um, rethinking where we evacuate. The recommendation is to have more than one place to go, more than one way to get there. Um, it's just pretty complicated mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. So. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. You have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have heard um, on a similar topic that I, a parent approached me today, um, thanking the board for getting the SRO in the building, um, and also saying that <coughs> she was, her son was having anxiety um, because of yeah. these topics. Yeah. Um, and it just started showing up this year, and it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, mm -hmm. But. It's pretty traumatic. Yeah. So it's def I mean, it, and we know it's affecting kids, but it yeah. just kind of surprised me to come yeah. out of that parent today, and I was yeah. just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So. And for teachers too. Uh, right? The teachers for staff are staff too. I think you know. I mean, it's sort of yeah. just, it's sort of asking them to yeah. put themselves on the line in a way that uh, you know is. Uh, yeah. They shouldn't have to. They shouldn't have to. Right. No. They shouldn't have to. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so regar regarding. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned, Christine, a couple events. I think you said students leaving. And so Officer Paul was called. Yes. I'm wondering if, I think I know the answer to this, but because for the benefit of the school board community, I mean, the community, is that happening at a rate that is consistent with like our state or our region? And is, is calling for Officer Paul in those events, is that also consistent with, like, neighbor districts? Um, I have no idea, actually. I, 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 mean, I mean, we don't typically have students leaving. This is one, just one particular um, that we're, you know, family that we're working with. So, um, but it's not a common occurrence here it is responding by calling the police it's when they leave the property yeah. is is typical for us whether that's typical for um i know it's t i believe it's typical for those yeah. in our su but i'm not yeah. sure about outside su's it would be i wonder how so when i when we were originally talking about I'm trying to be critical, no 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 I, i'm curious like how we would even figure that out i'm thinking where would i find that information because some schools when we started talking about, you know, hiring an SRO, I did put out on the VPA, you know, we can send out information <coughs> to our fellow principals, and I got information back from a variety of schools, you know, some K-8s, you know, do have an SRO. So in this case, you know, I'm logging the information, or we're logging the information just to keep track. And he's probably logging it now, too, I would guess. I would imagine. <laughs> Because he gets called, yeah. but how would that work? I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to do a little digging, find out how schools track that, and or if police track that. Okay. But it so is. You might run into roadblocks of like privacy. You or might or run into. We just call our data. SRO, and we don't <laughs> keep track of that information. It, right. But right. they're not tracking it. Yeah. Okay. I bet. Uh, but it's a great question. School, some school yeah. Don't. But in terms of kids leaving school property without permission, in my experience teaching, there's yeah. always yeah. <laughs> a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not alarmed, but I didn't want you to think to hear it that way. No, it's no. It, but it is, no, it's not a pleasant feeling when you don't have a child in your. Absolutely, mm -hmm. but now you have a yeah. <coughs> yeah. good answer. Yeah. In the but it is great to call Officer Paul. Um, he responds immediately, or he has so far. In the past, we've called, and there's been a wait. So obviously, you know that. So mm -hmm. he's come. Good. 
quickly. Yeah. You guys feel supported. I'm so yeah, glad. we feel supported. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I call them on my key. cell phone. It's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was really nice. Um, Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if I can find some information. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to update you. I went to the last, the first PTSF meeting of the year, and they are planning. Um, it's a really um, energetic group of parents. They really want to do some great things for the school. That's fantastic. So they're bringing back, and I <coughs> told them I bring this to you. I, don't, I think not for approval, but to just keep you in the loop. Um, they're planning to bring back the Holiday Bazaar on December 13th. That's a tentative date. They're going to do the, hoping to do the wreath fundraiser, a community yard sale, and they did the Yankee Candle fundraiser last year, and they're hoping to do that again this year. So, What is the Holiday Bazaar? It's Breakfast with Santa, mm. oh. but and they are not sure if it's going to take right? the same. Yeah. Okay. Say that again. Crafts people. Crafts come people. Too, yeah. Right. Like little crafts so they are coordinating with the farmers market. Oh. Okay. Oh, good. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool. great. Yeah. Excellent. Oh yeah, because the farmers market did the bazaar this past year at Damon Hall. Yeah, they did right. a couple Christmas. So Christmas. so it's sort of combining those two things. That's great. Yeah. yeah. yeah I think that's, that's fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah. They're exciting. Um, okay, so the information you've been dying to hear. Mm -hmm. The lunch the lunch program we, is going really well. So I did ask Craig for some numbers. That's just a little, I mean, I'm sure you maybe you've seen it. a great it. picture of Craig mm -hmm. in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I know, look, he's smiling. Yeah. He's yeah. like so happy. <laughs> he is working extremely hard. I can just tell you that. He's mm -hmm. working a lot of hours right now. Um, so that's the um, salad bar that comes out every day. Kids love it. Staff loves it. His, um, and so the idea too is like kids can get their veggies yeah. and they can always come back for and more get more veggies over and over again, which mm -hmm. is um, which I witnessed, which was really great. This is this is like I don't know. Last week, maybe Thursday, it was the day we he did tacos or um, soft tacos, which were I mean incredible. <laughs> um, they did local local corn. Kelly sent out an email, our farm to school coordinator. Mm -hmm. Any advisories want to husk corn this morning? They literally went to husk the corn and we served it at lunch, which came oh, from a that's farm. Great. It was it great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's a picture of the, the kids and the, some of the advisors outside. So, so these are the numbers. I asked them to compare like start of school last year, start of school this year. Um, we are up, and then to yesterday he gave me um, kind of a total. So for lunch from the beginning of the year compared to last year, we are up 367 lunches from the past month. For the past oh, yeah. three weeks, yeah, right? It's not even three weeks, not it's even. like yeah. 11 it's days. Five, <laughs> six, yeah, like it's like 10, yeah, Nine, it's 10, 11 days, yeah. not including today. This went through the 12th, which was Thursday. So, so it's a couple days. weeks. It didn't even yeah. count pizza day. It didn't count pizza oh day. Um, <laughs> so we're up 300 lunches in 10 days. Yeah. That's it. And we are, <laughs> so we're down in breakfast by 84 from the, in that same time period. Yeah. And you can see it's growing. Um, he wasn't including, we, we hadn't started breakfast after the bell here yet. So that's some of why um, mm. the numbers are lower. We're hoping they'll grow. But he, he would like to serve chocolate milk at breakfast. And I said, let me check with the board, because I know we'd had a discussion, Beth, I think, around chocolate I milk. I personally could care less. Um, <laughs> that's a, I shouldn't say that. Okay. As the dairy, as the dairy, yeah, as the yeah, dairy I mean, farmer more than anyone. Um, I think it was a staff decision it was a, not to start. I think it, it was more policy. of a, well, I don't think it is. I don't think it's the policy. wellness policy. It was more it was of an issue, decision. I think, of worrying about something that's potentially more sticky in the classroom spilling. I think oh, that's that? what oh. more or sticky, really? I thought, I thought it was sugar. 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 I thought it was just yeah, more sugar. I thought it was sugar. 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 It's not that much sugar. sugar. It's, not that much, it's not that much more sugar. No. If you yeah. look at the, yeah. if you right. compare the two. Okay, so. I mean, in my mind, if it's just kids drinking milk and getting a little more protein in their bellies, I don't. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think. Good. To, I just wanted your issue in my mind. But just I don't. I'm not the. I'm not the. Craig is I'm the not the expert. Expert. Like I don't. You can I, ask him I'm fine opinions. with it. Craig would like to do it, and we're. I mean, I feel like it's the right time. We're changing a lot in the lunchroom, mm -hmm. so why not give it a try? If it boosts our breakfast numbers, even better. I bet the kids would take milk in the classrooms. Yeah. Because they're all denying the breakfast after the bell milk. Right. Right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And Craig okay. wouldn't be doing it if he wasn't allowed. Right. Yeah, no, I mean, there I'm, are questions, right, about uh, younger kids, maybe it's a no-brainer. For older kids, there are questions about whether, 
you know, whether they should be, how much milk they should be drinking. I hate to, I, I don't want to say this in front of you, so, yeah. but they, you know, so, but certainly with the younger kids. I mean, I, I, I don't care. I think and the size, size of the, the milk, expert, I'm not so worried. Yeah, it's, 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 it's like four ounces. Yeah, it's it's, it's right. Exactly. Is it even a cup? Is it eight ounces? It's so tiny. I don't think it's, it's eight, eight ounces. ounces. No, eight ounces. No. It's tiny. Four, yeah. right? It's like four ounces. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty yeah. small. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. I, I really okay. I don't care. I get chocolate milk every time I have so much. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never get chocolate milk. It's exciting. I know. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, some oh, other. Can I actually yeah. have one question sure. about um, school meals? Mm-hmm. So, I was just going back to <laughs> Craig a little bit because Thursday at Open House, we're having our first community meal, which we is are. really exciting. Oh, yeah. um, Craig is feeling a little under the gun yeah. um, because he, Emily's not able to join him in prep. Oh. Um, so he's understaffed. So I volunteered and I'll be helping out on, I'll be coming Thursday, a, on Thursday at four to help with okay. some prep stuff. He also mentioned he's going to basically try to do a ton of stuff on Wednesday. So if anyone else wants to help prep, I and my guess clean up as right. well, great. I just told him I just needed to leave for that half hour window of yeah, my kids I'll open play. house. Yeah. but. Um, Wait, so there's going to be so the, there's going to be a community meal at the open house in the middle. In yeah. the middle. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's usually I didn't realize that. That's six great. to six thirty. Right? Yeah, it's usually a potluck, but okay. this is he That's wanted right. to. Okay. No, I think this um, is so awesome. it's, yeah. so it's five thirty to six is the K three visits down that middle wing, and then six to six thirty is the joint dinner. And then yeah. after that, four to eight, um, after dinner, the four to eight visits happen. That's great. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's so cool. So okay. he's doing spaghetti. So yep. I'd Sally. just reach out to Craig if you're able to help. Just let him know. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Even yeah, if you no, can just come at the end and probably help with dishes. Love yeah, I'll really love dishes it just to get him out of here. It's yeah, a, I'd help clean up. I mentioned that I want a ticket to come even though I don't have kids in school. Oh, please anymore. come. And so, um, <clears throat> but if there's any reason that we have to warn them, we can just bring them to throw that out there. At, we're, all we, gonna, we're all sitting in the same room. We're all no. going to be there. Oh, nope. Okay. We no. do not have to warn stuff if we're not discussing stuff. Mm-hmm. If we're all in the same room, Great. no big deal. But yeah. not engaging in conversation. Excellent. Or only we can all so be in the same room. Don't speak to so each don't other. Speak. Yeah. Don't I mean, speak. Don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, officially, well, we can all be in the same room. And, and talk not about other things. Talk about other things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So as long as we're not talking about school business, we do not have to warn it. He's really doing a phenomenal job so far, so any help we can give him that night would be wonderful. He, I, I checked in this morning, I'm like, okay, open house is, is Thursday. What do we need to think about? Because we talked about it about a month ago. He's like, well, how many people? I'm like, I have no idea. I like yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so. So it's yes. gonna be what so it's gonna I was be. planning. On, he said Emily's. I don't know what happened. Uh, Emily's schedule or something. Okay. Um, and Deb was not. He, I think he just said wasn't fully enthusiastic. <laughs> That's nice. So I don't, I'm, I'm assuming she will be there, but okay. Okay. So I any emailed help. him. Any Excellent. help would be great. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so just some other things. Um, there was an email, I think some of you were on it, about a 17-acre wood management plan of fallen trees that are down there. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't have a lot of knowledge around that, hoping somebody here might. Um, I talked to Mike about, is it our responsibility to go down there and cut those down as, the, you know, we're using the property? He said, well, I'm not a, you know, he said, I'll cut small trees, but I'm not really comfortable cutting large trees. I don't blame him. So I don't know what the yeah, I'd say, I mean, process I'm is for to, that. I'm happy to bring that home and ask. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> that would be great. Um, yeah, I can ask the Conservation Commission because they kind of help manage the town lands. And yeah. so I can bring it to their attention. And they emailed and see. I think, them. yeah, it was, a, it was an email from the Conservation Commission. Rob. To, I think it was Rob. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To, okay. to a group of us just letting us know what needs to happen. But it, it kind of just tossed the ball out there with... It no said, does the up. school have a management plan? Right. And I said, I have no, no. idea. I don't <laughs> think so. <No. laughs> but um, I liked the other recommendation was to hire goats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, Not for the trees. No, for the, the poison, poison ivy. For yeah. the poison, poison ivy. ivy. And what's funny yeah. is that, that would be I read that email that night, that. and then the next morning they had goats at the Lebanon Skate Park. Yeah. yeah. And, and they're so doing a great job, apparently. They're eating poison ivy? Yeah. My neighbors have goats, and they have them out for rent. Can we just do that? Yeah. You can rent goats. Yeah, and you yeah, yeah you rent so them, you and then you, 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 you fence them into an yeah, area, and then they just Tiffany. eat all the poison ivy, and then you just move them to another location. Yeah. There's no, um, Jill has goats too. nothing yeah. you have to worry yeah. about yeah. for um, sanitation. Sanitation for a school. 
I mean, I'm totally. You're doing it at a skate park. Fine with it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't think you want a sanitation wise. <laughs> you don't bring them in the school. Because Reading Elementary School did exactly. They did it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so Years yeah, ago. we should reach out to Reading. Uh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Long ago. It was like gypsy long goats long or something like that. I mean, I'd like to just have some animals at school anyway. I know. Chickens. I always wanted to do a chicken coop, and and there are staff that would love that here. They've asked. It's such a great idea. I so. would I would donate Who puts the, the chickens in it with checks. <laughs> Brittany, I have a problem with that okay. in my house. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you the so I'll just You're contact the okay. I'll <laughs> talk to That'd be great. send that message out and just saying we don't really have a maintenance plan who's supposed to be cutting down trees. Yeah. Okay. Great. And Mike's happy to do the small ones, but and can we work together to come can up we work with a together to make a plan? That could yeah. also be a community service. Like some of the middle schoolers could carry. <coughs> yeah, the we logs talked about that. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that. We just couldn't give them chainsaws. I don't think. Right. Yeah. The best no, idea. But that would be great to partner with Hartford if they're doing their forestry or anything yeah. like that programs. Oh, that's actually. And they need firewood down there for the forest. Yeah. The right. Garden, so. That's right. So I mean, uh, Wednesday in the woods. I can walk so. off. Um, so a couple other kind of exciting things. Um, the VPA put out a request for people to apply to be part of the Equity Practitioners Network. My friend Angie pushed me to apply. I thought about it initially. I looked at the application. I was like, oh, no way. There's no way I can do that. It's just too much. Anyway, um, I did apply, and, and Tiffany applied, and we were selected. So we're part of this network. Angie's going to support us. From the back. Oh, I didn't get back. it. Oh. <laughs> I applied too. Well, <laughs> I would take principles. Principles. principles so, priority. Angie's going to support us. Um, and it's going to involve, I don't know much <coughs> about it yet, but um, David is part of the, um, it was an equity fellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're hopefully going to collaborate on a project for the for the community around equity in our schools. So, we're, cool. we're pretty excited. Yeah. That's exciting. That's I'll keep you posted on all the homework. I didn't realize them. And then I got the homework. I was like, what? I have to do homework? <laughs> I but can't it's good. do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, it's good. And we've got a group of, from our acceptance and understanding committee that are going to the Rowland Foundation annual conference, which is also about equity. And um, so we're excited about that. Eight people, including two students. You're going mm -hmm. as well. So. I put the link there if you're interested. And um, we are working with a consultant. I think I mentioned maybe just to Nikki at our last meeting. Beth White from Big Picture Learning and Bay and Hall <coughs> Foundation. She's um, she was working. She's been working at Windsor, I think, for the last two years. And she yeah, came to an admin really meeting, done. and I reached out, and we met. And she's going to come. She's going to come and work with the integrated team on just really moving this. Um, student-driven, project-based learning um, initiative forward. She's really full of energy. I mean, you can't help but just like love her the minute you meet her. So I think she's going to be great. She's she's um, Angie's been working with me on some grant money because her part of what she does is she takes teams to visit um, big picture schools, which are immersed in this model. And this, so that's her hope. She's coming tomorrow to meet the team. So hopefully it'll go well. Tiffany had talked about her at our SV retreat. I don't know if you guys remember that. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's okay. the same yeah. person. Yeah. It's all about personalization and getting kids involved as partners in the learning, which is really what I think is important. Um, did everybody see the article about our twins? Okay, yes. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> that was, awesome. great. was that great? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Student Council had a request. They would like to run the school store again this year, which is kind of a fundraiser, so they need your permission. Uh, they run. They, we run the school to sell supplies to students. Then they donate the profits to um, an organization at the end of the year. So they would just like your blessing on that. I assume I so. Would, but I would. <laughs> so school supplies. But I do believe there may have been candy as well. Ooh, I've never seen candy up there, but be. okay. Maybe I, I was Justin did it yeah. last year. And I think that uh, they, I think it was there pretty clear. There, there was there were maybe that's what I was saying. Yeah. There yeah. might have been a few. Yeah. There were yeah. fidgets, yeah. fidgety yeah. type yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't yeah. think candy. I don't no, think they've ever had candy. Yeah. Yeah. They did have like did they have granola bars or something? They they have some snacky foods, yeah, but not definitely not candy. 
Okay. Jamie would not. No, allow that. Yeah. no, There's no, she no would way. Not. She would not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's the end. So, um, questions or things that I missed? Another feel good update um, that I forgot to put on. Um, I talked to uh, Allison and Michael Wilson um, mm -hmm. about Kira. Oh, yeah. And she is, um, she did 14 days of intensive Italian um, oh. <coughs> and then landed with her host family. Um, and the host family is apparently amazing. Um, everybody's thrilled. She's thrilled. Um, and she's living with twin 10 year olds. Mm -hmm. um, and everything is going like really well. perfectly. And um, Allison and Michael wanted to thank us mm. for finding a way to. Make it happen. That's great. Great. So it's yeah, it was really cool. Update. They yeah. I I asked if I was allowed to. And I said, so she's doing well. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I guess we're moving on to the radar list. Um, okay. So people have their radar lists. I don't know how we want to do this. Anybody have any ideas? Oh, tell me, I have one. I, I have yours. yours. I, I can find it. Probably in the, um, <laughs> um, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Especially if they have a team. No cost. Oh. Um, I don't, yeah, I have Miss Scott's, and Sarah sent me hers. Um, I don't think I ever sent you an official list. No, did you, you ever, just yeah, did you ever like, send it out, <laughs> back out, Nikki, once you had put it all together? No, it because like, oh, um, okay. it was so, there were zero common items. Oh, Are you right? serious? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, I think there oh, might have been one. I mean, it was like. <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I. That's interesting in and of itself. I mean, um, I. No, well, I'm I, really think, I think I um, think the definition of radar list um, was broad, mm -hmm. and so I think that that's partially that was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so maybe I mean maybe we just start with um, <clears throat> going around the room and each sharing our list, and then if you hear something that you really feel strongly about maybe jot it down I don't That's a good idea. like how does how does that sound for a facilitation mm -hmm. that sounds good. <laughs> and I'm happy to start if people want to get their list together and um, and then from there maybe we can go around the room again and decide like of that new list that you have in your head what was your top priority I don't know That's what do we think and did sounds you I mean our, like what's list? your definition of a radar list well, I mean, the radar list for me was just um, things that we didn't want to slip off of our radar. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, budgeting, we had a few community forums, so I was kind of thinking along those lines. Um, just things that we wanted to have a, a maybe a, I'd, I'd mm -hmm. like to have less than 10 items that we could just kind of checklist at the end of every meeting mm -hmm. that, that just says, are there any updates on our radar list? Um, and it can easily be no, but just to not let things slide, to keep us going in a common direction. Yep. Um, so I can start with mine. Um, so uh, my first one was building function and flow, and this is more of a physical um, concern. Um, so building security, um, food, gym, classes, all of those things, well the security doesn't happen in the same room, but food, gym, and classes all happen in the same room. Um, and it's also thinking, you know, while we're thinking of the whole building, we've got music that can be loud sometimes and funnels down the hall and just, just how the whole building is functioning and, and I think we need to get a committee together to look at that, but that's not flushed out really well right now. And so, says the engineer. I know, <laughs> exactly. That, that was, so that was my first one, um, <laughs> and then like uh, engaging students in their passions. And I think that we're we're working on that, but that's definitely one that I don't want to fall off the radar. Um, 
reaching the community and making them feel included. Mm -hmm. um, truancy, teachers and students. Um, the building vibe. Um, just making sure that things stay positive and if they're starting to go negative, what can we do to fix that? Um, social and emotional issues in students. Um, and then I wrote food integration. I kind of feel like we're doing that already. But no, there's a lot more. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what, yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah. So I'm looking at my, yeah. my radar list that I emailed to Nikki. Um, okay, so that was my radar list. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to, uh, Scott, I can pull yours up if you want. I, my, I, did, I did find mine. Oh, okay. I was, you trying, didn't to write, I was trying to write down. Oh, um, uh, so you only have to write the ones that really pull to you. You don't have to write them all down. If there was one that really pulled you in, or if they all did, I can read them again. Okay, so I had building so function and flow, yeah, that's great. engaging students in their passions, <clears throat> reaching the community and making them feel included, truancy, both teachers and students, building vibe, social emotional issues in students, and food, in food integration. Okay. Somebody want to go next? I will, just so I can get it out of the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> We're not a scary group, Scott. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I may have, um, I don't have a lot of context here. My list was a list that I sent to Nikki. And I'll just... Why don't I just read them off and then go back? So I, I wrote down acting purely as a school board, school safety, that goes with Nikki's, meeting our community, I w you could also say engaging, mm -hmm. so that's definitely right there with Nikki's, um, investing in the future, pre-K, middle school, contract negotiations is on my horizons. That's uh, something I agreed to do and want to do an SU name change and that and new policy what do you mean new policy um so it's awesome like creating new policy. right so now I'll flesh that out like anything I, I feel so great that that the whole district has like the a great new book in front of the administrators now um, <coughs> so if there's anything I think we have like the bullet Proof ones all in place, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, recommended and they have names. I'm not going to try to remember that right now. So, any, any further work on that? Like, um, I mean, often when I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, oh, that's just the, that's an answer that could be answered by policy. When we're talking about something, that could be answered by policy. If we school safety, I think that goes right along with. Um, like building flow perhaps I might work with that and also of course the SRO accomplishment so I think that some of these things are done um, I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking when I wrote acting purely as a school board but I think that again the policy accomplishment that this district and working with the SU did was a real example of what school directors do so more of that. There, I'm done. Good questions? <laughs> I'm happy to. Okay. You go next. You have no one in Excel. I like this. No, this is y'all stuff. I know, but I'm excited that you're doing it. <laughs> oh, are you, are you uh, writing everybody's down? No, I'm typing Excel. madly. I know, I like it. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. Can, can we back up just awesome. briefly? Yeah. Would please? you like a pivot table? Yes. I didn't flesh the one about investing in the future. Oh yeah. I think that, and I wrote down PKMS on my list. Um, so if we're, if this is a visioning project, if this radar list is somewhat a visioning project, I'm, I continue to be interested in the the, um, the concept of investing more in younger students, or more of our community resources in younger students earlier. Uh, because that's where science continually uh, illustrates that it's it's uh, 
worthwhile. Mm -hmm. It's all worthwhile, but it's very, the returns for the community in, in the next decades are, are large. So I've often con considered privately um, what would it be like to have a, pre a public pre-K mm -hmm. option in our community. Mm -hmm. And then the middle school piece of that is if we keep trying because I haven't been here a long time, but a few years, and so we've tried a few imag imaginations of middle school. And what would it be like if we actually, I guess as an SU would be the next step, looked more like um, one district that had all grades, and then there were a few satellite districts that had pre-K through six and we work together more rigorously at the from middle school through high school and more. That's where we had the more more district continuity. Those are just so, sh so sharing programming resources with middle through high school. Yeah, I mean, I think it might take some physical changes, like um, students leaving this building right. to go to an environment where it was more a middle school okay. and not a middle school inside of an elementary school. Right. Like if Elbert Bridge all of a sudden became our seventh and eighth grade, everybody sent their seventh and eighth graders over there and that was like the middle school, is that what you're saying? Like it's all yeah, like, like for the whole for the whole SU, school. right. Yeah. Or maybe it was right at Windsor High School. Maybe there was one wing there that's gonna be the big middle school. That kind of thing. So it's a perfect segue into, the, or not a perfect segue, but an interesting segue into the first item on my list, which is revisiting the question of renaming our school to reflect that we are not just an elementary school. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, Weathersfield School is called, it's not called mm -hmm. Weathersfield Elementary yeah. School, it's called Weathersfield School. And I've heard a lot of people say that because, you know, that wait, you're Heartland Elementary School, but you're not an elementary school. You're an elementary school and middle school. And so um, is there some, you know, would renaming it us Heartland School, the Heartland School, the Heartland Community School, whatever, um, kind of communicate that we care about middle school and that it's we're a K-8 school and it's it's really an important part of our mission here. Um, there was a conversation about this a few years ago and I don't think it went anywhere but I remember sort of engaging on some level with it and um, just something I didn't want to let fall off the radar. No. <laughs> um, the um, and then that sort of leads into just the, the ongoing, um, you know, just trying to keep track of, uh, of how the middle school is doing and preparing uh, students for high school. And what are, what are some things, it's, it sounds like there were some conversations um, that Jean had with some students and we got some good data and um, it's very much on my mind as I am <laughs> watching my ninth grader sort of, <laughs> you know, figure yeah. out, um, you know how high school is different and what skills he needs and um, just make sure that we're really keeping track of that that our kids are showing up at high school um, knowing how to do all the things that, that they're pretty much almost immediately asked to do um, without any preparation it's, it's amazing um, <laughs> big shock it's a big shock yes um, and then I wrote down keeping track of our of the demographics <coughs> to help us um, sort of plan ahead and, and budget, how big is the eighth grade this year? How big is it gonna be next year? How big is it gonna be? I would just love to kind of see those numbers so that we have a good sense of what's coming and it, probably that's something that you guys have looked at. Yeah, but we did a lot of that. I realize that, budget time that. Yeah. That, that that would be really helpful. Yep. Okay. Um, I think in the larger sense too, in the demographics of overall of our community, like what kind uh -huh. of census mm -hmm. data can we actually yeah. be using and looking at to inform our budgetary process as well? To, yeah, and as Scott says, to do some long, you know, to really do some long range planning, like how yeah. many preschoolers mm -hmm. are we going to have in six years? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what would it take to do a public pre, you know, just to get a sense yeah. of some of those numbers so we know what we're looking at. That it won't just be half day. Exactly. <laughs> right. It, yeah. No, it's exactly. Um, proficiency-based grading. <laughs> um, 
I, I, I just heard a lot of anecdotal evidence that that people don't under, people don't understand. They they have no idea how their kids are doing. Their kids don't have any idea how they're doing. Um, I've heard, I, I talked to some parents who said, "Oh, I." Did, did were their grades given out last year <laughs> because they had been used to getting report cards and they didn't know how to check and mm -hmm. I just I'm concerned that there is that there's some gaps in people's just knowledge of how how kids are doing and um, and you know hearing comments from teachers that they're not sure they know how to communicate how students are doing um, and then I, I I don't know if you all saw the uh, Vermont Digger article about the the survey that was done, <clears throat> but the NEA did a um, the Vermont NEA did a big survey, and um, it's it's really you know the the responses were very troubling. Teachers ha don't know how to use proficiency based grading. They feel they weren't trained. They feel they weren't prepared. They f they don't think it communicates important information to parents. They don't think it's in increased equity. They don't, which was one, which was one of the main purposes. So, um, I'm sorry to be sort of a downer on that one, <laughs> but <laughs> it's really important to me that we don't. You know, I know there are efforts to improve um, everybody's skills with this, but I, in the meantime, it's very important to me that we're doing what we need to do so that, you know, I think I, I, parents need to understand where their kids are and, and kids need to understand where they are um, so that that was sort of my big one um, mm -hmm. which may be a longer conversation mm -hmm. um, and then I'll just I'm gonna cut off one or two because they've already been met, uh, they've sort of already been mentioned um, well just tell us what ones they are though uh, <laughs> well we we got an well I think we got an update at the last meeting but um, and it may be too early to know but just uh, checking in on the uh, on the algebra class at Windsor and how oh, it's yeah. how it's going and how how that's all working. Our kids going. They're mm -hmm. going well. It's yep, going well. Going great. Mm -hmm. We've got, we've got three. The we have three. We have three. Yeah. Is it three? Yeah. We have yes. three. Mm -hmm. Three. And that's actually, good. David, we we had a meeting before this, and he went to visit last week. The oh, class good. and sat in and wanted me to report that it's you know the kids are engaged it's going really well that's it's, great yeah it seems Fantastic. to be going pretty um, smoothly he was uh, I don't know uh, TME psychs the teacher psyche, psyche I was getting mixed stuff um, they have early they have early release on Friday Windsor as a district their kids go home at noon oh, every Friday huh. this is their third year or second year Third. third year of early they did two two years on Thursdays mm -hmm. right so their teachers have meetings and professional development every week during an afternoon which um, Albert Bridge also is able to take part in now because they're yep. one district so um, mm. uh, anyway that makes their uh, class periods a little bit shorter on Friday Oh, right. And the kids come back a little bit earlier. I mean, it works, it works fine because it's it, the kids come back to, to the study hall. Yeah. So it works fine. But Tammy is and David are you know trying to figure out if maybe the kids could stay a little bit longer some Fridays so that she could give them you know direct attention, which Fantastic. would be great. Yeah. yeah. Certainly, it's her prep time, so it's certainly up to her. But cool. that's great. Thank yeah. you for yeah. that yeah. update. Um. Oh, music theater program revisit increasing the second position, um, which I, 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 it sounds like will be part of our budget discussion possibly. Um, and then finally, are we on top of the changes in special ed funding? Mm -hmm. um, it's been delayed, but it's still coming. And <laughs> how will it impact us? And just yeah. are we on top of it? I assume that we are, but just just wanted to ask that question. And I think yeah. that's it. Okay, I can go. Okay, I had questions around special ed as well. It was more around um, staffing, and so how do we? Um, I don't know how can 
Is there a way to change policy or anything like that in a way to help staffing? So if it means we can't hire, I mean, obviously we're still looking for people. <coughs> mm, I think we are. I think we just hired our last. Well, I think we just last. hired our last. We were one. full yeah. strength so now, in the or will will be this week. Yeah. yeah. So in the future, if there's problems like with hiring, is there a way to increase hourly rate and reduce number of hours? Like, is there some wiggle room that we could potentially give folks around how we fill those positions um, so we can try to get them soon, <laughs> sooner than later um, to make it an easier process? Um, other big thing for me is science instruction. Um, I, I don't really see it like much happening in this so like what is our science instruction especially for our early elementary folks and really the professional development that's happening you know how can we really support the teachers um, to get them feeling really excited about that um, and then along with the project-based work and stuff you guys are already really excited about I'd really like to see also kind of a, a, a vein with our food education and things like that and really grounding it in place in place-based education and so um, I don't know if you know David Sobel, he's a mm -hmm. great educator for for uh, outdoor and place-based education. And his always thing is like no death and dying education around that <laughs> before fourth grade. And so if you like, if you want to do a, a project-based learning um, and with first graders, it shouldn't be around the um, the dying of the rainforest mm -hmm. because first graders not going to feel much like that they have power over right. what they can do, yeah, you know, for that. So it'd be more like, hey, first graders, let's do this project based within our community that is more about preserving maybe those the you know stream behind the school so it's so it's based more on that so I think um, it would be really interesting just to think more around those kind of connecting more with the, the place in the community as well as I love the idea of more you know getting the community outreach involved and things like that um, yeah I think that's it that um, came up for us over the community brunch this Saturday mm -hmm around the environment and then um, kids that were talking about Emma mm -hmm. and her curriculum which is amazing. Incredible. Yep. But she's taken you know a personal hit em emotionally and you know reading about this stuff and, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and kind of brought home the challenge of introducing the subject to younger kids. I mean she's she's reading on her own but it's it's such a heavy topic and yeah, how to approach it and have so note, people learn stuff without hour of NHPR was today was mm. kids and climate change climate education well, it's, good. it's well, it's and now there's a lot around <laughs> and the I mean, emotional yeah, burden yeah, exactly yeah. 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 yeah that's what it was all um, mm -hmm. did you hear it too no but yeah. it's yeah yeah our and language it, is turning to crisis and catastrophic mm -hmm. and <coughs> um, mm -hmm. and those are big words to think about when you're yeah. mm -hmm. in middle school, much less, you know, third grader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, my list, kind of, where is it? Similar to everybody else's list. <laughs> um, similar to um, Sarah's, I think, or there's definitely a theme. Are we revisiting the stuff from the forum too? Did we ever? Kind of go through and we did. Right? Oh yeah. Did you, we talk we about did. that last? We talked yeah. about that last. Okay. Yeah. And but um, and was there a compiled? What did what we do with it? <laughs> <laughs> we just looked at the big picture and we're going to use it to inform budgeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know parents were hoping to hear back. I've heard that from a few people that they keep thinking. Well, from my wife. <laughs> that they were going to kind of get a communication back that kind of brought it, summarized oh, the information a little bit, I think. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe it'd be just, yeah, just something out to the... Um, it may be sir. too, you know, maybe we'll we've see. gone too far past it, but I consider it. Didn't we decide as a board to pose a question to the community through the Wildcat Weekly? They were the same questions from the, the forum. Questions. Yes, yeah. we did. Okay. We did that. Um, I think people would be interested okay. to hear maybe a little bit on the metric piece side around it, like mm -hmm. what weighed heavily, you yeah. know, when you're 
That was kind of our point, was to see what was important to the community, and I think people that participated in it would also be interested in what kind of rose to the top. Since we all split up into groups, right. you might not really know. Do yeah. you take notes on that? I'm trying to remember. We, we, we have must have. I mean, we, we must have minutes minutes from the meeting. meeting. I mean, yeah. what rose to the top, just like offhand, was increase our music drama yeah. opportunities yeah. for kids, increase after school opportunities for kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, differentiated learning. I differentiated think learning. Things that we heard that people wanted to be meeting the needs of different learners mm -hmm. within the classroom. Um, any other biggies? Middle school rigor. Yes. Mm -hmm. Middle school rigor. Mm -hmm. rigor. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of things that are coming up mm -hmm. in our radar list. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I think they're. Is there? A, <laughs> I think there's a theme. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do we feel there's a necessity at all to have another type of forum thing before we dive into budgeting season? Like, is there other things it's hard answered? to do? I think, I think we've think, gotten a lot of information. I think we got a lot of information from that forum. Even though, you know, we also had the policing stuff yeah. kind of land on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, do you just want a bullet list like? Oh, these are the, like the big, the big. Um, I think it would be nice to okay. give. I mean, if we have a, did we have a list yeah. of people to? Can, you know, I don't, I know. I don't put think it we in, just I can sign just put in a newsletter. These yeah. are kind of. These were the the school board we went heard. through the. Yeah, I had, list I had a the couple forum. of the parents that you know in my friend circle, of course, yeah, that, but I, the, that I had thought good. they'd so see something. So you can something report back a couple things already. Drama club's back. Yeah. Yes. She went away last year. And didn't and she have like twice the number? She had of forty kids. kids. She had forty kids sign up. Yeah. So she's 40. running two sessions, right, or something? For the club? Yeah, the Monday after school club. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's so amazing. She asked to move us. She, so she had that's a stipend great. for two sessions, one in the fall, one in the spring. And, and she asked. Shakespeare thing drove a little bit of yeah, motivation. Yeah. They <clears throat> all really got yep. psyched about yep. Shakespeare thing. So she, um, in middle school. We use. Um, uh, so cool. It's uh, Northern Stage. Yeah, oh. they but there are certain. It's, it's like a the group bridge, or the bridge, something. Bridge yeah. up. Or bridge I think it's bridge up. Yeah. yeah, they come yeah. in and do for um, sixth that's graders, right? Through Ms. Macri uh, coordinates that. that. Yeah, and yeah. the kids really took it on and they memorized their lines mm -hmm. and were really good. And did a that's cool. Impressed with each other and themselves. It was cool. Nice. Um, so my list is similar. Math curriculum. Um, I, I keep hoping that we. Maybe this is um, that we, as a parent, I could reach out to the individual high schools and find out what their different requirements are for math, but do we have that information as a school to know, since we're a school choice, what they would need to get into different levels of math and science and high school at the different Yeah, it's like schools. Woodstock accepting the same amount as Windsor or Harvard yeah. or whatever. Like, is this have the same math requirements and science requirements and things like that? Yeah, or if they're different. I know when I was in community college, I had, and that's what it makes me think of, I had what schools required what core fundamentals to transfer, you know, what they would take to transfer. I think of it that way. Like, what are your... I what mean, do you require from? They test. I mean, I mean, they test them. They, they do test. placement tests, they and uh, I mean, them. our algebra students um, would be, you know, uh, upon successful successful completion of the algebra course, would be eligible for the next level of math. <coughs> um, typically, they go into algebra. They typically leave here and go into algebra. Some test out of algebra. In, in most schools, it's geometry is the second mm -hmm. level. Some and then algebra two. And yeah. algebra two. Some do a combined, so. or they used to do a combined algebra geometry or algebra two geometry course in some places. <coughs> I don't know. That's just from my own children's yeah. experience. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's the case anymore. I guess that's it. I don't know they what do I'm shooting tests. for. For my Hanover does a placement yeah. test. Hartford does. Hartford does. Um, and Hartford, Hartford does. Um, does Woodstock? Um, that not group? that I can recall. I know they might wait and do it you. at the beginning of the year once kids get there. I don't know. Yeah, um, okay. I mean, I think the bigger the bigger issue is that if you want to take advanced mm -hmm. math in high school, you need to be able to 
to get in all the courses. So you need to be able to place out of algebra. Yeah, algebra, right. right. And so yeah. th I think that's the thing that's driving. Oh, you end up having to double up, so you have to take right. two maths yeah. your freshman year. If you don't right. do it ahead of time. And I don't think there's a lot of, I mean, I don't have clarity around that. Like, I would like to help my kids get there, but I don't, you know, now I do. And I, you know, I'm certainly, mm -hmm. anyway, I was wondering if that's something that we could familiarize ourselves yeah, with that. so that all we right. could help mm -hmm. the kids get Beth? Or the parents. No. Yeah, it's more She has a lot of that information. Right. Yeah. It was one of the themes asked. that led to the, uh, the kids going yeah. to Windsor this semester yeah. for, because that, that physical equation I mean, of just not enough time in high school yeah. right. to get to right. the upper if math Well, it is yeah. yeah. worse than that. It's not enough yeah. time in college if you don't come okay. in from high so, school I mean, with. So they're really right. I, I started out in no, non-credit math. <laughs> classes in my freshman year or you pay for that you don't get credit mm. you just stay behind them <laughs> right. I mean I think that's the that's what people yeah. are concerned about is that yeah. you right if you're not but it's hard to get know. there if we don't know what we're shooting for exactly yeah is the thing so that I might think be parents might would like but it's, it's really great that that option is yeah. Yes. Right now, so, you know, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm not. That. Yeah. This and is, is that not option it. Really These are not judgments for me. I just right. Is that option just it out like basically the teacher recommending students and the students mm -hmm. have to? No, to do they that they have. We no, looked at SBAC scores. Yeah. There was a test that we gave um, that Tammy helped um, Beth and Angie worked mm -hmm. on, and teacher recommendations and uh, parents obviously had to be on board. So mm -hmm. cool. overall, student yep. m maturity. It's a high school class. Um, they're yeah, they're definitely. Um, I check in and I'm like, "How's it going?" They're like, "It's work." Like, it's yep, a, it's it a is. real class. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, it's a real class. A real class. <laughs> yeah. You know, on the ground level, are these uh, elementary school students? Uh, excuse me, middle school students uh, sitting in on a high school class that's they're, taking yeah. place anyways, even if they don't come yes. down from Harlem. That's what I'm trying it's to not about. a special yeah. class. Yeah, yeah. but it has been the curriculum, the program has been modified to uh, include topics that they might miss okay. if they completed the eighth grade um, Eureka <laughs> program. So it has been modified. Although all of Windsor students did not get into that first period court class, so she has another section that those kiddos are in, but oh. then she knows the program very well yeah. and is able to adapt and add in the things, the topics that they would miss. Because typically in eighth grade math, you do a little bit more geometry that you wouldn't get in algebra. Okay. And then there would be a hole when you get to geometry, so. She did a nice parent meeting before school yeah. started. Um, Sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. makes herself mm -hmm. pretty accessible for helping kids that are struggling, awesome. mm -hmm. communicating. Yeah, it's great. Okay, I'm um, gonna get Ed on the yes, table. Okay, so going intervention, we'll back um, making sure kids with learning disabilities that don't have IEPs are getting yeah. help and resources. And if that's something, I wonder if that's something that we should consider when we're considering our budget. I know that resources are well. Yeah, I would assume that resources would help. Um, drama music um, is, you know, kind of where we started with all of this anyway, and um, I just think, I think we have a special program, and I hope we keep supporting it. Um, af and then after school, I don't know what to say about after school, <laughs> except that we, we had that community meeting a while ago where it sounded like the rec center had some kids that they weren't sure how to handle and I'm wondering if there are things that we have a responsibility to or if there are any ways that we can I don't know intervene or mm -hmm. I don't know um, and then special ed special ed just in uh, general I'm just reading with my notes but which is just kind of general the conversations that I think we keep going. I think uh, adding on to what Sarah said, the, um, is there anything we need to consider the in laws, terms of the laws about to change? How will it affect us? And the budget. Are we ready? And, yeah, we had extra more kids this year. And anything we need to consider around that without having any 
idea of any sort of answer. Around the funding? Yeah. Well, it's off another year, right? We've got a year. Yeah. It's a block grant. The way I understand it is we can use our resources in a more broad way. Mm -hmm. So special educators will be able to work with students that are not special education students. Um, but does that mean that we're going to have to hire more special educators? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like our special educators are tapped out. They, they are, but they're like they're. I mean, it gets very complicated yeah. if you follow the law very yeah. specifically in terms of. I mean, we were just talking about this today. Is it feasible that a special educator is in a classroom, working with two students? you know, particular, two students in particular, but there's one other student that's not a special ed student that's really doing the same thing, and can't they help? I yeah. mean, yeah. Yeah. Right. no, legally no, but, yeah. you know, in some yeah. cases, that would be really Yeah, and so helpful, there's meaningful. a law that's going into effect that's going to help that, or? I mean, there's mixed the reviews. <laughs> okay. If you talk to special educators, this is not the ideal fix it. If you talk to other right. people, this is it's a different yeah. way of thinking about how to use the resources mm -hmm. in a building and that's going to be a, a, shift. a shift for people for sure right um, and it's going to take a while to figure out what's the best way to use that what's mm -hmm. the best way to make sure everybody's getting what they need you might be able to catch I mean my mind you might be able to support some students before they end up in that um, yeah. in that process so but we'll see the, and they haven't really determined how they're going to give out the block grants, <laughs> which is the, that's um, kind of the really scary part, is that, okay. like, if it's on population, then right. small rural schools are going to be in trouble. Yeah. Right. But yeah. so they're going to try to so tweak that, but we don't know how, and yeah. it's, um, there's a I, lot of questions. I imagine it getting postponed, to be honest with you. What is your take on it, and do you think it's coming? Is it state? Yeah. Funding? Um, I think there's some things they didn't anticipate well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Welcome to education. Come on. <laughs> There's some things we didn't anticipate. Although, um, Secretary French was at our Vermont Curriculum Leaders Association meeting <coughs> on the 6th, and he was saying that the major policy focus for education is Act 173, which is the special ed funding law. And I'm like, well, why? It's a special ed funding law. And he's like, it's going to, it's the, it's the law that faces our school systems to look at their proficiency-based learning, to look at their uh, um, professional needs-based professional learning, it, look at the inequities in your system and making sure that we're, you know, our MTSS, it's, got, it's all the pieces that make up our education system are in that law effects. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was, that was an interesting we're conversation at he yeah. had at us. <laughs> yeah, he talked, we listened. <laughs> and and I left that off my list, the proficiency-based learning, which I'm a fan of. I'm a, and, uh, you are and I know not. that it's... You are not. I am. Yeah. And well, I, you are a fan of it. I, um, I know that it's really challenging right now, but, I, but I've participated in that kind of learning, and I, I'm kind of an advocate for the outcome at the end, but I know it's hard getting going and I know that parent, parents yeah. are not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. It's a shift that people don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to figure that out and having shifted myself as a teacher it, it takes a lot of um, practice rethinking things and it, you always fall back to what you know and so we're not I mean I, I know teachers equate a, a three with a and 80 percent right yeah but it it i mean elementary school teachers have always been proficiency based right right can it's, they it's tricky when you get to middle school it's skill based like, and you know what you can add that's, that's right. cut and dry you can or you can't add to 10 quickly right um when we get to middle school the proficiencies um standards um feed into competencies or proficiencies and the language is all over the place too so it's confusing but if if the model is moving to a more student-driven, project-based, integrated curriculum, proficiency-based learning makes sense. It facilitates that. It you facilitates can do that, that. with a proficiency-based and, and, system. And what is, 
what I mean I think we'll kind of flush this out in our design work what are the most important things for our kids to be able to leave us knowing and being able to do and you know some people would argue you know algebra is not that thing right I mean maybe for some it is but maybe for some it's not so I just know having gone through a similar system that at the beginning it didn't make any sense right. to me at all I felt confused about the words and the what I was shooting for and then at the end I know that I learned more than I would have in a grading system. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. You want to bring Ed? Yes. And we'll do this finish. Ed, this you're up. Oh. Sorry. Hi, Ed. <laughs> I had to play out. I didn't communicate it to you. Um, so I, I'm starting to see some buckets that we can plug this stuff into. Um, and so after Ed's done, maybe we can help. You ready for your pivot table? That list. I'm ready for the. List. I'm ready for Colleen's pivot table. Can you table? plug in? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Will you do? Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't die. Look, see. <laughs> Okay, those came together in verbal conversation a lot better than they did via email. <laughs> I, got the, are like I got the email and I was like, uh, uh. <laughs> like, I don't know where to go with this. Do you want to sit here, Ed? Would that be helpful or not? No. Okay. Look at you with your printout. Yeah, because I did myself sideways and I was going to be. It's like, got the green light show. I was like, like I'm my neck trying to read it. <laughs> Where do you see the green light? Oh, there it is. Yeah. He's and it, and oh, it printed it. I only looked at the first page. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of. The list. Well, um, if we like to well, highlight do, each cell yeah. that has similar mm -hmm. ideas, mm -hmm. uh -huh. a, a color, yeah. 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 then it starts to like, fall together, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah. That might be helpful actually because it's hard. Please. Please. It was depressing. That was not Friday news. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't look. I'm glad I didn't. I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should, I should not have opened it. <laughs> See, this, this is why I, I knew to explain to because I didn't. You didn't know it was, it was depressing just news. I saw a few over. Yeah, yeah. when it just comes down and we're going to tell the two general fund, we're just like overspending. We overspent. overspent by one Come point. on. All right, here it comes. But that's mm -hmm. insane. I mean, and this is why. I, yeah, yeah, but it's good to I mean, hear, hear think about in budgeting coming up with ninety five thousand yeah. dollars. A mirroring, <laughs> right? Yes, good point. <laughs> do you have to do the shift display thing? Function display. Input. Is that a, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I would like to understand the overall There's threat in some ways. Energy. Hmm? Input. Yeah, <laughs> what if you, oh, you probably can't. I was going to say, could you share it with Christine, but. I wouldn't change that because that Christine was just using that and it was it worked so it's got to be on the right thing if she's using the right same chords and she hasn't moved the yeah. He might not be able to if it's a different program. Yeah, was that something we like totally special ed blew us out of the water? Is that what you guys are learning? No. The which blew us out of the water? Special ed. Well, didn't we already know that? It was overspent by six. We were under budget. Yeah. yeah, the special ed services were under budget, and it was overspent by six hundred thousand dollars in the SU budget. And then that got billed back to every school. Where is that? Yeah. Um, that well, it, it shows up in the um, assessments. So you can see we got oh, yeah. assessed back two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. So two hundred and thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah. That was our 30% of the 600,000. So that's like two. Based on over. equalized people. Wow. Yeah. Drag it over. Remember, this is it's showing the double screen. So he's got to take his and slide it off of his screen and onto the other screen. Just go. Do you know what I mean by that? No. Christine, you know what I mean by that, right? Just take the top of that and slide it over across until you see it on um, this screen. So where else are we? No. Um, on your tuition. <laughs> I didn't do Don't we know this? Like, this is, none of this is really a, a surprise. That's right. We had kids move in, so we knew that we were going to be over on tuition. Excess spending. What is excess spending? Energy. Yeah, why? What's the deal with energy? I know, energy? we have our solar thing. Yeah, what's the deal with energy? We're out yeah. super hot. That summer. way you can do different things on your it's screen. We don't want us to see you have, while this is being done. You, you, you can set it a different way. <laughs> All right, you good? You yeah. What do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> Three now, I don't know. Okay. Huh? Okay, so, give us the bad news. It's <laughs> bad. You have too much chocolate. Yeah, I need chocolate. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you want to be able to move it? Ed? No, no. Okay. Here's your chocolate for the bad news. I, like this, though, right? I don't think you have to touch. Use the. Uh, I need one of these too. Thank God the cookies are at this end. So if you look on here and you take the mouse and see over there, and you're wow. okay. able to click on the butt, the arrow. Okay. That's not the ideal way to do it, but it works. Okay. All right. So what you're seeing is this is the backup to what I, the first page that you guys have is the summary. Okay. So that's page one. All right. Unfortunately, in my haste, I did not number these pages. So that's page one. Yours is front to, yours is two sided. So two, three, four, going on down. So I would, I would ask you to number them so if you have questions, then we'll all have a common um, place to look. So this was page one. I apologize for that, but That's page again, one. Um, so, Ed, before you get started, I just want to say thank you. 
for putting this back into this format because I know that that was a total pain in the butt. But it really wasn't actually. Was it? No. Oh well, thank you anyway because it helps us compare year to year, and I know it was extra work, wasn't it? Not really. I mean, it, it, it's Good. the way this system works. Oh, so now we're comparing two years on that system. Well, we're not comparing two years. Oh, I guess we're not. No, we're looking no, at. We're one. looking. Yeah, at, you're right. Yeah. So this is it. It's different than yours. Yours is not. Oh, right. So we don't have to oh. compare. Yeah. It's the same. All right. So yeah. you take a look at your revenues. One of the things I want to explain is you less the FY9. And that's why 18 you ended the year in the deficit. So we carried that deficit here because of the funding point. All right? So that's why you're seeing in the budget column a negative. Budget. All right? The negative 18? Yes. That was the deficit at the end of FY18. You put it in there. When you put it in there, it lowers the number. Of, it, it actually adds it into the funding formula. So you've got money to offset that. Okay. If you take a look at the rest of the budget, you get down to here, the education spending grant, you're twenty-eight thousand dollars in the red. That number is from Act 85. So back in 2017, if you remember, there was a legislative action that lasted way into the, the session went right into July because there was a there was a back and forth between the governor and the legislature about the full implementation of Obamacare. And when we fully implemented Ob Obamacare, there was a savings in the premiums. So the premiums went down and the deductible went up. So the governor's response was, we need to make, we need to get money back to the Ed Fund. So we should be seeing some savings. And then the question became around how much savings. So it went back and forth, back and forth. And finally, the, the compromise was that they came up with Act 85, which was a two-year clawback year. In 2018, there was an amount. And in 2019, this was the amount that they short paid the Ed Fund funding to get back some of what they said was those savings. So that's why this is in the red. Okay. The rest of it uh -huh. is pretty self-explanatory. When I do state aid for transportation, I, I, I don't know what the re reimbursement rate's going to be. So in this particular year, the state aid for transportation was budgeted at 85. It came in at 89, which is more than what I budgeted for. This is for unenrolled residents at... This is basically, uh, this is a new uh, revenue, and I'm not quite sure what it's about, but I believe it's about people that are um, homeschooling, that are going to the tech center, and they've been identified, and we're getting money back for those students. So the tech formula is funny in that what the responsibility is of the school district is that they're supposed to pay the difference between what the state pays the, ed the tech centers directly and what the actual tuition is. So say, as an example, that the tuition at Hartford was $15,000. The state has a, they'll pay 87% of a state average, blah, 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 blah. And that comes to about, say, <coughs> So they'll pay them directly. The school doesn't see that money. It goes from the state directly to the tech centers. But the five thousand dollars is the part per student that the state, that the school district would be responsible for. It's not that much. It's usually in the three, three to uh, two, two and a half to three and a half thousand dollar range, depending on what the reimbursement rate is and the tuitions. Strangely enough, a lot of the tech tuitions aren't aren't, aren't as high as the regular ed tuitions. Okay, so overall, you're up. You budgeted eight eight million thirty-five thousand six thirteen. So you collected 11,000, which was 11,258.67, more than what you budgeted, which is 0.14% above budget. Good news. <coughs> so get down in here. Um, these are the expenditures. Yeah. And I break the expenditures out by object code. No, just go over to the... I'm just gonna There's another arrow there. There you go. Yep. 
up a little bit. Oh, right there. there you go. <laughs> okay. Wages, wages. When we when we budget for wages, right now we're budgeting. As we start into the budget season, what we're budgeting for is we're budgeting for fiscal year 2021. We're in fiscal year 20 because our school year starts on 7-1. In this particular case, 7-1-19, and it ends in June 30, 2020. Well, June 30, is that, that gives you your fiscal year. It ends in 20, it becomes fiscal year 20. So next year, we'll start 7-1-19, and we'll end in 6 30, 21. So giving it 21. So as we start the budget, what we're going to use is we're going to use what your staffing levels are. And that means, if you're adding teachers or anything like that, that would be a conversation that I would have with Christine. More importantly, if someone were to leave, you're budgeting for a slot based on who's in it right now. So you could potentially have somebody that's in there that's got more experience and you hire someone with less experience, which would, in, in this case, could explain some of why you're seeing this extra, okay? And that also can go the other way. So in this year, you're seeing a little bit better. And again, the same thing down here with benefits. There's two things working in your benefits. One is you can have some movement in the type of plan that an employee takes. He could take, she or she could take a family, a two-person, or a, uh, a, 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 a single. And the difference between, say, a single and a family is probably twelve to $13,000, okay? In addition to that, the negotiations, when we went into the Obamacare world, there was a lower premium, but there was a higher deductible. And when we negotiated with the, with the teachers and the paraprofessionals unions, what came out of those negotiations was what we call an HSA, health savings account. And those health savings accounts are funded directly by the school district. And it can range, let's use family plan as an example, from a $4,200 $4, HSA that the school's responsible for to a full $5,000, which would cover the entire deductible, okay? How it works is it's gotta be an eligible expense, and that's, we have a company called Health Equity that processes them. They work directly with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they determine whether it is a, it, it is the cost is a deductible, and as you pay it off, your deductible goes down and you reach that 5,000 and then insurance picks it all up. What happens is though, if you're a teacher or a paraprofessional and you don't use your medical for the whole year, we still budgeted whatever you, you know, for a family $5,000 say, and you as an individual don't spend that, okay? That money falls to the bottom line. By that I mean, that is why we're looking at that, it's because those HSAs weren't fully spent. So part of the reason that this is where it is is because the HSAs were underspent, which falls to the bottom line, giving the benefits. And the second is the health insurance movement could have generated some uh, savings as well. Contracted services. So if you guys go to page, let's see. I'm going to have to go, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, page eight. Page eight is the detail behind contracted services, okay? This? Page 11, I think, is what we have. Yeah, it says contracted services at the. Oh, I'm calling. I'm seeing pages. I'm sorry. Yeah, all the way so to the benefits. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, benefits. At the top end, there it is. Slow down. <laughs> Slow down. It's like a fly. Yeah, if we have the right plug, we'll be able to touch screen. 
Why don't we have the right plug? I don't. I don't know why it's not working on his. You have to go into the system. Jeez. So the contracted services. These are all the benefits that we're using through right now. It's like eight pages. Is it professional aid and use services? So why is there a $28,000 surplus? Part of it is, is that we budgeted 106,827 and spent 94, and that's in maintenance. That is in uh, facilities. So there's $12,000 savings there. Nursing services, $11,000 savings. We budgeted 14,000. We spent 2,223. This is what Deb Christy Maples wanted for some particular reason. I know exactly what that $14,000 is budgeted for. Well, it's the surplus because we didn't spend. Surprised it wasn't spent. Maybe it was spent in different. We, ha we, we had it over fourteen thousand something. Like that. No, because we, we had it in stipends. Remember, we straightened that out GL. this year. We had some of it in stipends as well. But this is for nursing services. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's like the tooth tutor, farm to school, which was in two places. Oh, Coordinator. Farm yeah. Farm yeah. So I I have it all listed out now. All right. So that's why here. There's $11,000 unspent in that particular line. And then there was professional educational services at regular ed elementary for 5,744 that we only spent 160 bucks. Is this last year's FY you're saying? Yeah. This is yes. FY this is, what you're looking yeah. at right now is the FY 19 year end projected balance. Last, so last, last year's last year's budget. Year. This is 20. This is, okay. we're in 20, yeah. So like between those three, did. this, <laughs> regular red elementary, nursing services, this is, this is um, co-curricular, that's 5,180, and that balance is right out of uh, 2610 as maintenance. Hmm. So those three added up with the deficits in other areas gives you an overall surplus of 28,000. 780, But do you think that Christy Maples? Deb Christy Deb Maples. Christy Maples. Deb Christy Maples. Um, Eleven thousand went into a different line. Like it was I think. I think that. Um, the farm to school is, too, yeah, right? part of it's Dr. C, part of it's um, Monique, the tooth tutor, uh, Monique Underhill. But Monique was paid out of ESU. And, and, and that ESU changed last too. year, right? So we decided to do that after the budget was already mm -hmm. um, created. I was just seeing if there, are we going to have anything else hit it? Or? No, because. No, it's done. It's done. Okay. Great. And some of it, Dr. C's contracted, so if we didn't use it, I mean, it's an hour later. Mm -hmm. Great. Are you, are you on the wrong screen with it? Uh, Try, can you, do you have a page up button? There you are. Your mouse right now is on the little line over here. There it is. It's on the numbers right there. Oh. All right, tuition. We had a little bit more tuition than we uh, budgeted. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that. 1.7, percent over what we had budgeted, and then assessments, and that's special ed. Mm -hmm. So special ed is $695,000 over spent in this fiscal year. So this is the portion that you guys are responsible for. And then energy is over because of electric and oil. And oil was, uh, we projected a cost on oil of 199 mm -hmm. based on the FY18 number. Our gal price per gallon was $1.89. We went up to 99 
price came in at 236. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we spent, we had used more gallons. We had a much uh, harder window, winter than mm -hmm. the year prior. Mm -hmm. So between that mm -hmm. and electric, we were over budget by 20%. Why was electric up? And I was going to say, how about our electric? I mean, with our and with our track and our solar tracker. And stuff, what are we? That I can't answer. I don't know what that is. What are we doing I don't differently? Know what you guys are using that may generate more electric. I had the same question in Weathersfield, but Weathersfield's got air conditioners in every window, so that was an easy answer for them. You guys don't have that. No. 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 We do in some rooms. Do we have more than we really used to? Suck up some um, this this one's pretty yes, new. We do in this room. We do in the science room. We do office. in the office. Well, not my are office because I hate air conditioners. Sure. Heat, like heat pumps. No, there is. There is see. And the conference room next to your office. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's a little. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, it may, I mean, it, looking at the how much was an increase from just in electric from one year to the next. So it's a great project-based learning. Who's our, yeah. Yeah. Who's our yeah. Did the right provider there. rates go up? I mean, personally, my <laughs> electric rates just they always increased. Yeah. They didn't increase. That much. Market. So the electric bill was up by five thousand. Or we were overspent by fifty-seven forty-eight, and the oil oh, we were overspent by thirteen thousand one forty. Yeah, that's a lot. That's that a lot. Is. Okay. That might be. Nikki on the radar list of the building and flood. Yeah. To do an energy audit at some point. Yeah. And, and we did just do one. Did we we just did. Oh, okay. yeah. It was part of the five year plan, mm -hmm. facilities plan that just ended. Who did it? Like, I it was part company. of that. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't here when it was done, but yeah. <coughs> it was part of the finished. report for the five year plan that was done. Black River? Was it Black River? Yeah. yeah. That came out when Trevor was in kindergarten, so. Well, so six years. Yeah. 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 But it might be worth setting an email to staff. Yeah. Mirroring. Shut your, make sure you're. Yeah. Like if, if well, screen. The heat's, all, the heat's all controlled by, I mean, we don't control the heat. I'm less worried about heat. It's like screens and. Things that are plugged in and putting computers to sleep. Yeah. Like no, shut, there's Shutting a lot well. of ghost loads happening, like just with all yeah. the charging all yeah. the time and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, but that didn't change from one year no. to the next. Yeah. That I'm, trying to the find I'm trying to get into. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether I have to drag yeah, this back really over. <laughs> you should be able to just get in. But there. it could I just want to get on. I just want to go into. I mean, if we haven't done an energy yeah. audit, you should be able to get into about anything on your computer without dragging it out of the screen. Sure. Like things yeah. could get plugged oh, in, and people are I, like, "Oh, this is saving yeah. here." Well, and just energy deficiencies. You know what I mean? As things things are getting older, you know, there's things more in the behind me. You know, I know what is it and why? Oh really? Yeah. 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 Like, how old is the freezer? Yeah, we had our, our fridge was like 15 years old, mm -hmm. and we got a new one, and our electricity bill was amazing. Huh. So just oh, I mean things like that. Maybe yeah. taking so a heads up to I think Craig wants to apply for an equipment grant. Right. So they'll probably be okay. asking for so showing. I said I'd be happy to prove yeah. it and help them with it. Okay. But, Requires no matching or anything. It's just this will still be. <coughs> <good. laughs> I think minimum of a thousand, up to twelve, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like. This. See now you're enjoying the benefits. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's still not. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, he had a little dance going on up there. <laughs> what? It was more of a sarcastic <laughs> dance. <laughs> what is excess spending? In? I don't know if you can talk in. Excess it. spending. Is, um, Shouldn't that always be over? You have special education costs that are all at the supervisor. Excess spending that you see in your general fund is educational spending that is above the tuitions that you're paying to schools for students that aren't on IEPs. Okay. So if your kid, if you have a kid at a school that's getting physical therapy or speech oh, okay. yeah. at a regular ed, and you're paying tuition of say seventeen thousand or eighteen thousand. For those extra that, that cost does not cover that particular thing. Yeah. So that's an excess of cost. Got it. Some high schools charge for um, managing the five hundred four process, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. or being the case manager. They'll, they'll yep. tack on additional costs per.
student. Yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, overall, I look at this and I think, yep, we're over. But what, like, the only thing that seems like at all in our control is, like, electricity, which right. is, like, yep. $5,000, which is yeah. so sad. So, like, what, what really... I don't know. It just makes me even more dreading the budgeting process. Yep. Um, <laughs> because I just feel like so much is you just throw your hands up because we don't control it. Yeah. 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 I mean, <clears throat> it's not completely beyond the control. <laughs> we, the SU board can address some of the things that are at the SU, and, mm -hmm. and but. But like the special ed assessments, which is the biggest hit. Right. There's not a lot. We of don't have a lot. Of and that, that was really the only thing that was up in the SU budget. Yeah, that's true. Except planning for it and yeah. Yeah. yeah the community engagement. And and talking with the community yeah. about it. Yeah. Through our community, the important part, which I think they do understand. Yeah. After last year's. Support. Yeah. Well, the energy question, Ed, can you answer, you might be able to answer this question. Has something changed with the Martinsville Hydro? No. So that, <coughs> whatever that rate is, that has not changed. I, I, I wondered if there was perhaps some state machinations that were no. changing. No, because that was a contract that they wrote and that was written in stone. They have to do that. That's for any any energy savings that you get when you get into a, a, a um, what they call that when you have a solar array and you're part of it. Net metering? Net metering. When you're net metering like that, part of your agreement is that's your you get a set payback and then get a set payback. What I was looking at was in this fiscal year, we uh, well the state has mandated that we go to a a new uh, financial software. So we were in Limerick <coughs> for most of the, for the whole time I've been here, and then we started to move into Tyler. Tyler Technologies was a software, because we knew we moved, had to move out of Nimerick. Nimerick, we got the word from Nimerick that they were not gonna support uh, any new changes to the chart of accounts, which is another thing. But, so we made a decision, I made a decision to move, and at that point, the state was saying they weren't gonna do anything. Um, we moved, we selected Tyler. Tyler was the vendor that 85% of the state was on. All right. So we went with Tyler, and then the state Not when you're the uh, went into overdrive, and they decided that they were going to select a vendor. They selected, they had a bid, and they selected a vendor that nobody in the state used. So we all have to So everyone's on even footing. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so in addition struggling. to that, what they had to do is they had to, they also instituted, as they were making the change, they instituted a new chart of accounts. So what we were using in Nimric changed completely. And our software changed completely. And our implementation date was on July, or January 1st of 2019. So half of the year was on Nimric and the other half was on eFinance. Mm. And why those chart of accounts? Well, the, the detail that I gave you, if you look, there'll be zeros and there'll be something spent. That's because when they realigned the two, the, the chart of accounts, the way we budgeted in FY19 in the old way did not come over to the new chart of accounts because they started wanting more detail. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning they said, for instance, we used to put stuff at district wide. So the programs were district-wide, <gasps> elementary, and secondary. And they were defined as, you could put anything in district-wide that was going to cross over both elementary and secondary. Well, in the beginning, they said you can't do that anymore. So Christine and I sat down. We presented it that way, right. remember? Yeah. It was a, yeah. it was we a nightmare. <laughs> We tried to say, all right, how many kids are in there? Right. Eight through six, they consider to be elementary. And seven through 12, secondary. So we spent right. Long time. quite a bit of time trying to figure out the principal's office, for instance. How much, what is a percent of that will go to secondary? And, with, and then they changed it all. Oh. Okay, so it's gone up and down. And yeah. it's slowly, the changes aren't as dramatic anymore. There are still some changes and some nuances. But we're kind of getting to the point. But I just want to say that when you look if you took a look at the, for instance, if you go to secondary or elementary, they don't 
we used to put everything as elementary teachers for all groups in elementary ed, regular ed. Now they want elementary ed, English, elementary ed, math, mm -hmm. and they want the same thing as secondary. Yeah. So they want us to break that stuff out. So that's why there's so many pages. Aren't most <laughs> elementary teachers teaching yeah. all of the people? But yeah. that's mm -hmm. gone back and forth too. They've said, yeah. And initially it was break them all out, then it was put them back in, then it was break them back out. But I think they're coming around to what you just said. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's that it's, it's starting to go back to, wait a minute, aren't all elementary students? They, the teacher in an elementary class, really, in my know, they teach pretty much everything. Most. They, they yeah. start to compartmentalize. So know. that's why this but thing is so many pages long. Hopefully next year, or this year, as we do our financials, that'll be less. But what it also points to is, one of the things that's come out of this is that we, as a supervisory union, have never really put a lot of emphasis into purchase orders, okay? And what a purchase order will do is it'll allow you to encumber funds, okay? So that means that when I do a financial report, in the old days, I used to have to project what we were going to spend, okay? Well, if you're doing purchase orders, and you're doing them correctly, you're putting those in and you have them in there already. So if you're paying electric, for instance, you could pick a number based on last year and you can put it in there. And when you pay an invoice, it will take that portion, whatever you pay will reduce that. But it's a paradigm shift in the way people thought, think because what they used to do is they'd get an invoice and we pay off the invoice. And we're still kind of there in the sense that we're not projecting past the very, very beginning of where a purchase order would take. It's, it's, we have to get people's heads around what it is, mm -hmm. you know? And, and the other piece is like for tuition. <laughs> if we were to put a purchase order on the tuitions for Woodstock, for instance, what we would do is we would know how many kids were going to Woodstock, we'd know the tuition and we'd encumber the whole thing. But we never did that. We waited to the first bill and then we encumbered that for the next semester. <coughs> but we should be able to generate a bill, but that knowledge resides at the school, and we have to get, either they have to create a purchase order, or they have to share it with us to get it to the point where we can create one. So it's more proactive in the sense of it being able to kind of project out of how you're spending is right. happening throughout the year yeah. yeah, a little so bit easier. I, I came up the last time I was signing warrants just a couple days ago, and I was asking Ed about the pieces of paper that were new in the stack where they include these budget units. Mm -hmm. And so um, when folks are spending money here and they're using a, a different, there's a, a different document generated and the act of um, asking for this mm -hmm. particular uh, a payment of this invoice is alerting that spender to uh, where they are within the budget. Have we spent 10% yep. of the budget, 25% mm -hmm. yeah, of the budget? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, so that's that, really, oh. yeah. <laughs> the, the library board does, we get it that way from the town, yeah, and it's, it's really helpful. Because you just sort of see where you are. It's the it's first like, time oh. I had seen it, but it was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the question becomes, it, it's, it, so if you bring a quarterly or a half year report to the board, and you're overspent somewhere, what do you do? You discuss. Do you freeze for the spending? Or do you say, I hope we'll make it up somewhere else? Probably the latter. Yeah. Right. But hopefully you really already know extreme. exactly. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know what you're... You take corrective action. And, you know, you know. It depends what, what, what line it is. What help with right? more than anything is the wages? Because it, it encumbers a lot more than what we used to be able to encumber. We used to be able to encumber with the old system. Wages, health, dental, fighting Social Security, and retirement. That was it. The rest of them, workman's comp, disability, all of those other ones we couldn't do. Mm -hmm. But you gotta, like for instance, if you were wanted to, there's a flat amount of professional development for the teachers, it's based on the contract. It's mm -hmm. spelled out what you have to care. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to say to me, I wanna put a purchase order in for this amount. And then I could encumber that. And I wouldn't have to come to you and say, well, benefits is doing great, but, that includes professional development, and we haven't spent anything in professional development. It's still a guess. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's an educated guess. And it's not me making a guess. Yeah. Right. So overall you're you're uh I don't know what just happened to that. <coughs> so if you go back uh, So you're running, you ran a $94,000 deficit, which is 1.18%. So what that means is that when you start budgeting for FY21, which we'll be doing shortly, that's, instead of having an $18,000 negative, you're going to have a $94,000. That includes that $18,000, includes it. Okay. So we're starting. Yeah. So you can see, the especially led was the driver. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, you did pretty good. I would say otherwise, we did really well. Really well. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were. Well, the energy thing was. A, was yeah, that's a little bit bummer. surprising. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not with the oil prices, I guess. And not with the length of it. I mean, it was a long. Part of it was it was a long winter. That's true. So are there any other questions? No, but that's really helpful. Thank yeah. you. It, was there any way, is there any way to anticipate? I mean, I know we've kind of fed it around, but the change in the, the special ed costs? Nope. <laughs> they haven't. They haven't even figured out how they're going to write a formula. There's committee that was trying to figure out how uh, they I, would I do it. I think what you're talking oh. about there, I, I was at a meeting on Friday with the Vermont Business Association. I mean, that's that's a committee, and that's going to be a committee for a while. They are miles apart. One of the big things that, yeah. that is really going to be as hard to anticipate is they said that we're going to see a 12% increase in health insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that health insurance, that's a guess right now, but then they also said that... To pay to teachers? Yes. Uh -huh. um, you guys don't negotiate that. No, it's no. state. It's yeah. state mandated. Mm -hmm. and they're really. they're about as yeah. far as from here to Harvard. They're they're in they're about to mediation go to arbitration. arbitration. Yeah. Well, they're facts finding. Yeah. The <laughs> state so does. they told me the and us that we could anticipate getting union. yeah a number to use in like December. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's super helpful. That's a battle between <laughs> oh, the union, it's the union and, and the, and the, it's the union and the union. It's, 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 it's the, the, the employer's You are not commission. supposed to budget. Yeah. Like, Vermont NEA. Like, the Vermont NEA and, uh, and the, the school, school board right? association. The state? Not, no, I the, the um, insurance. I mean, have, is anybody fighting with the insurance company? <laughs> I mean, that's what should happen. It's about time it. for us to start fighting with the insurance companies. I'm well past. Well, taking well, a hit in my own home about that. called the Vermont School Board's Insurance Trust, which is uh, we bid our medical with uh, almost everybody almost else. Almost everybody yeah. in the state. So we're part of essentially of the buying group. Okay. And they provide us, they go out and do the bidding. And they, Blue Cross has won that bidding over the years. And they also have a fund that they've been able to, any savings that they've realized as being the, inter, the intermediary, they put into like a trust. And over the years, they've been able to use some of that money in the trust to buy down any increase. And part of the reason we're seeing a 12% increase this year is that there's no money in the trust. The trust is empty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to feel the, the, the increases that we're, wow. that we're so always we've been there. getting. Yeah. <gasps> Used to big funding. That's scary. Wow. That's scary. So That's I don't know as we budget what number we'll use, but it is going to be significant. I think if you were going to be safe, you probably want to use 12%. But they said we'd get some more guidance. I don't know. Means, but December is kind of late to have that number. It's going to be really late in the sense that um, I know there's a lot of emphasis on the SU budget, okay? Primarily because it represents 1.4 million in this year's, in last year's budget, and it's more this year. So you want to know where that is, but you've got more employees at the SU now than you do in any of the schools. We have over 50 or 60 current sessions. 
and then we have behavioral interventionists, and we have 20 teachers. We have a lot of people. So part, when you build the budget at the SU, the easy part is the central office in, child, in uh, early childhood. The tough part is special ed. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And the expectations that you guys set, that's, that's the other thing for special ed. It's going to have to be looked at. What, what do you need? And that was all we talked about in this program, all they <coughs> talked about in this There was a presentation by the teachers there, and they basically said that they're smart. Mm -hmm. By the special ed teachers. No, so, you know, by the regular teachers, 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 teachers special saying ed. they need more help. Well, I mean, that's not a surprise. To <laughs> not a surprise at all. No. No. Other questions? No. Thank you. Makes sense. What Ed was just talking about there, the Act 11 um, process. So there's the employer commission and the You should just be able to disconnect your the computer the from the thing and it'll go right back to where it was. wants to see who is on the employer side. But if it doesn't work, don't blame me. The VSB site. <laughs> you can just find, pull that menu down and there's faces and names. Um, is Neil on it? No, I don't believe Neil is on it. Geo Honingford is there. He's from Royalton. He's probably the closest board member to us regionally. Ed, how is the uh, food program doing? I, uh, from what I hear, it's doing really well here. It's doing great. Yeah, uh, you know better than I would. Well, I know. We know. I'm, I'm talking financially. <laughs> it's kind of early financially. I, don't, I know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> don't have a, I, I think he just submitted the claims for August. Okay. So yeah. I, I can't say. I do know that he's had to spend to get it up to speed. I mean, he's yeah. gone into the kitchen and he's asked, <clears throat> I need this, I need that. And I have to go know. Because I feel like, hey, if he's going to be successful, he's got to have what he's got to have. Yep. Yeah, so the budget you. you guys developed is going to be <laughs> null and void. Null and void. <laughs> well, that's, that's the question you're asking, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it was pretty bare bones, if you remember. It was basically yeah. a guess. Um, so it was I, a guess. Well, and I was telling you, Christine, he, Craig plans on uh, applying for a equipment grant from the state, and so that could improve our, like, you know, getting a steamer and getting some different equipment to up with some quality issues. What if it just if oh, he goes, ordered a pizza swarmer at Windsor. At Windsor? Yeah. He doesn't work for Windsor. It couldn't have been Windsor. I don't think so. so <laughs> <he's> <laughs> <Heartland>. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you mean Heartland. <laughs> Did we order a pizza warmer? Uh, I'm not sure, but I know. I know he. Got, I know we just got a. Um, I know we served like 212 on Friday. Pizza. Oh, he hit. Wow. He broke 200. Oh, 200. Yeah. Goal. I mean, that's so two-thirds of and it was pizza yeah, day. That's amazing. It's pizza Friday, day typically. You know, everything yeah, but what he's really after, yeah. he's told me, is now it is. My kids didn't like yeah. 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 That's where you make the money. Yeah. Now that's where you make the money. money. He's yeah. getting them. He's getting them. The teachers are excited. The teachers are coming up to me and saying that they like it. But Weathersfield, he's still battling over at Weathersfield? Yes. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Two different worlds. Okay. What do we need to do to support Camera's him? Camera's on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <I'm> surprised. <laughs> no. I'm but how can we support? Yeah, that's, yeah. I, you know what? You our experiences. Okay. Yeah. And oh, Craig, we should have an update from him. I mean, he's, he's, <coughs> the guy is the most enthusiastic human being I've ever seen. He's, He's constantly got that blue coat on that's I know, like a wildcat yeah. thing. Oh, you know, yeah. In the kitchen, cooking. Absolutely. He brought muffins into us the other day. That's great. Oh. He doesn't miss a beat. No. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Really quite so good. Um, so, okay. Back to the radar list. Um, yeah. Oh, she's saving it. <laughs> Did you do some organization while I was talking? I don't know. Did you want did you want me to share mine? Oh yes. Yeah, thank you, Christine. <laughs> well Brittany and I sat together and ours is really more, you know, with an education lens, but actually quite similar. So proficiency based education was on our agenda. It, and that's Hold on, everything Kelly, from Kelly's catching up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> education around it for parents so they understand it and teachers and students as well. So 
and I know that's on on Angie's radar list as well so it's not going to get lost um, we wanted to and this is just like things we thought we should be reporting out on a consistent basis um, one of our big <coughs> CIP goals is trauma-informed practices in our building and how that um, aligns with our behavior system and our philosophy around discipline. Trauma-informed uh, trauma informed practices align with our updated behavior system that supports intrinsic motivation and character development. That's really our, our focus. Um, student engagement is a huge one, and that's very broad, but just generally student engagement. And MTSS, which how can we improve the way we're meeting the needs of all our students? That, that targeted in intervention. Our high flyers, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and the fifth one was really strengthening the school community relationship, which other people yeah. said as well. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's that's good. Good. Yeah. Proficiency based education. Okay, and that. Trauma informed practices aligned with our updated behavior system that supports intrinsic motivation and character development. Um, student engagement, and that's broad, involves you know, portrait of a graduate, all that work. Mm -hmm. We want our kids to be able to leave here being able to do. It ties into that. Um, MTSS, so how our system can support meeting the needs of all our students and providing access to high quality instruction and intervention and strengthening the school community relationship. <coughs> that seemed like enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> the strengthening community one um, that's one that really I, as, I mean a few people mentioned that but as you say it, I, it that seems really important because yeah, like it supports all these everything other things. Right. so how can we do that I mean what what well, we're working we on help? it um, well we're you know our our getting the community in the school is is one piece of it right yeah. which, make, yeah. which which we're working on for yep. I mean I would love to see um, which we've started. I mean, I'm on the Heartland Cares um, Committee, which is all about the health and wellness of our whole community. Mm -hmm. um, being able to, I know this year, Jean is organizing um, job shadow days. We're doing it ourselves. We used to pay, um, I think it's cl uh, Click, Upper Vat, it's like Upper Valley Business yeah. Partnership or something. Um, but if we want to develop student skills, I mean, they need to be reaching out to businesses and sending emails and making phone calls. So Jean and I are kind of working on that, but it would be great. I mean, what's in this community that we can tap into? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the, um, the woods and the outdoor education, we'd love to get, you know, involved the community. I mean, that's, I think, one pretty um, welcoming way yeah. to get parents involved in the school and to see kind of the programs that we're, that we're trying to build in the school. I, I, honestly, I think families are really busy. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's my question. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get them here. It's hard to get people they, here. It's hard to okay. expect them to do one more thing right. in terms of checking their grades in power school. It's I one print. more thing. I it's not on their radar. I feel like parents <laughs> are tapped out. They're, the parents are tapped out? Yeah. yeah. No, I think, no, really in a way that I, it, it feels kind of Very new, different. new and yes. heightened to me. Just yeah. in, in my circle, people who need help with child care, people who need yeah. help with transportation, people who are in crisis, and they, right. you know, yeah. it's, it, there, it, people are having a hard people time right now. Out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it speaks also and to our, you know, our increasing free and reduced lunch rates. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is the, you know, that our younger, you know, families are struggling. You know, like yeah. Okay. And I think that when we talk about community engagement, I think we need to think a lot past our parents. Like, I, mm. parents. Parents. Our parents, the families are <coughs> tapped out, yeah. and we need to start relying on, we need to be able to rely on the rest of the community. And it kind of, like, I asked, I sent an email to the listserv asking for Fort Wynn's help. I got one neighbor mm -hmm. respond. And mm -hmm. out of our entire community, and I very much said this is not for parents, this is for anyone who has an interest yeah. in education and nature. One neighbor. I, you wonder if grandparents 
are feeling the pre you know the Tapped pressure is being pushed up because yeah. mm -hmm. they're they're being relied on more and so they might once have volunteered or done something like that right. and they just can't now because they're yeah. caregivers. Yeah. Um, it feel it certainly feels that way. It feels that way, and it that does. impacts the school. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. The volunteers aren't there. Nope. You know, as far as that that, that action, that action, Nikki, I'm not. I think there is the old word for it is digital divide. I, yeah. I, just mm -hmm. think I know people who don't want anything to do with the list, sir. Right. They have an idea what it is. Yeah. So, but we rely on that a lot for mm -hmm. reaching out, mm -hmm. and so maybe. We need to come up with other. I mean, when we actually have a forum and we invite the community here, and there's a pizza board uh, or a something up Damon Hall, maybe that alerts people. I mean, that that's yeah. that's, that's yeah. going a much further distance. But uh, I can't look for volunteers for I mean, everything that way. Yeah, I mean, different. <laughs> I know. I agree. I mean, there, that's, I think it's just like um, yeah. I, it speaks to using different modes. Yep, yeah. I agree. Like all the time, just mixing it up. Mm -hmm. In fact, <laughs> okay, <I'm not laughs> I had yeah. this wild idea that we ought to hold a school board meeting on one of those Saturday breakfasts. Oh. Like once a year. <laughs> or I, like actually, I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, actually like <laughs> love that idea, Scott. I would support you in that. I would too, actually. Or, I mean, I, maybe we could like speak about that more. That was just like. Just I don't know that crazy. it would be. A, I mean, we'd warn it, but I don't know that yeah, it would warn be a school it. Yeah. But I think that. But to but show, people I mean, people, yeah, we, we right. might have to like craft it's a totally our totally different carefully. group of folks that come but, to that. Mm -hmm. They yeah. come yeah. to that breakfast and but, um, but just to see what we're talking about. Yeah, that right. I'm, sh I'm sure some of those people are people who complain about their taxes. So for them to just have heard what we heard from Ed and to understand where that tax rate is coming from, yes. it's, it's absolutely right. essential. I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I like it. Okay. We'll continue um, to think about that. I think you, I can do a chart. No, I think in the interest of my health. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so special ed came up a lot. Community came up a lot. The students came up a lot. Um, music, science, general, and math came up a lot. It's a lot of just instruction, really. Yeah. Oh, and look, you just subcategorized she, it. So we she, have she an admin category, budget, culture, education, facilities. What are you, what app are you using? Colleen. Excel. Oh, that's Excel amazing. Look, it's like a graph of it. Keywords or something? Is that what it did? No, I put them in. Oh. Yeah. She categorized them. Nice. Um, so I think. Secret budgeting. Hmm. <laughs> That's your version of fidgeting. Mine yeah. was doing this. Worlds apart. She did numbers. Right. <laughs> I think Colleen and I'll get together and go through this and see if we can okay. make some sense of it. Extract some data okay. from it now yeah, that we got it all. Because in the interest of my health, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Tired? What? You got I, you this cold. I've got the cold. Oh. <laughs> and I was doing okay We're until about eight and then <laughs> I started um, declining. Okay, so we do not need a tentative executive session, but we do need to set the next agenda. So we need um, the principal's report, I think, could look the same. Okay. Um, that's going to be on the oh, right. 21st. First, right? I just want to make sure we have it because October. Yes, I have it on the 21st. October 21st. Yeah. Okay, October 21st. Make sure it's the right date. Oh no. <laughs> I started to put in a thing and it said maybe dinner with John. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. Sorry, I don't know why I thought I would. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of luck, Donna. Okay. That was really funny. Six o'clock. Still are we sticking with six o'clock? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I may send out an email to move that to 6.15. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I coach hockey until 5.20, so I won't get off the ice until 5.20 in Woodstock. Um, okay, so that's the next board meeting. Um, so I 
that can look the same. We need to have a budgeting discussion. So like the process. radar list needs to come back. Um, budget. I think we need to start, <clears throat> and it comes out of the forum information, I think we need to put together um, our dreamy money is no issue budget. Um, and like, just get it out on the table of the things that we would really like, and then we'll be able to pare down um, from there to what reality can support. Um, but I think that we should start having those discussions then. Um, somebody's going to have an amazing SU name. <laughs> I'm actually not going to put that on there, though. But if somebody does. Um, is there anything else that we need? Update. We talked about an update from Craig. Do you want him to come, or do you want me to deliver it? Uh, I think... I think another update the way Christine just did, and then maybe yeah, in correct. November a bigger update. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, let him. Yeah. He's, he's pretty busy. It, it, is yeah. the budget, it sounded like maybe getting a harder update on the budget. On the school, would, the school meal budget. The school meal budget would make sense, just so we know if it's way. <laughs> where we're going. I just don't know if he's going to know. He's probably not. He may not. He, not, would, he won't would know by there. October. No, I but I would, I would be interested in seeing what his take on what, what his, our budget was. No, but what's his food spending right now? I mean, that was a very solid line. If he's yeah. two thirds through his food spending come end of October, there's an issue. <laughs> so, like, yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah, yeah. That so, I think useful. that's my concern with the new program is just making sure like it's, it's Craig's experience isn't dealing with the budgetary no. and not paperwork end of things right. so he's doing an amazing job we just need to make sure that it he continues to do that but not like totally blowing us out of the water mm -hmm. so you still work next to Jenna yeah you yeah so uh, financial kind of a financial update <laughs> But I, I is there anything else on the next agenda? Um, is there any issue that you guys want? Um, no. Okay. Do you, no, no, don't say that. <laughs> well, no, I just want to. <laughs> no, I don't mean like. <laughs> is there something that you're looking for to maybe present to the board and let? Yeah. I'd like to continue to know about the SRO progress, yeah, you know, and yeah, that, yeah. that's about it. That would be yeah. a and we'll, report. We'll have a portrait update as well. Oh, yeah. Have first yeah, yeah. Have first meeting. Yeah. 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 I thought, so that's what I was getting at was some thank yous. So that, that looked like that team, the portrait team was yeah. really it's like together. a good, yeah, yeah. it's like a really, really, good good nice, really nice cross section. Yeah. Like yeah. And, yeah, it's good. And the other thing that um, I did, um, Angie, you came in a few minutes after we had started, but I really appreciated that your, your blog. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was really good. Thanks shared so with too. everybody. Yeah. And it was really actually spoken of. You know, that subject matter was spoken of tonight. tonight so yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was really helpful. Actually. It, was I'm, it was. I was trying to figure out where it was. Is that? I like can't ever remember. I have to look at. Is like an internal thing. It on the cites list? Google. Oh. It's sites google.com WSES. I, I don't know. It's not, I don't have an easy URL okay. to get to it because you can't get to it from our website. Okay. You have to go That's, to the I was trying to email. and I couldn't. And I was like, what am yeah. I doing wrong here? Yeah. Okay. And they're redesigning our okay. website currently. Okay. So I'm assuming once that's up, then it'll be a link from the curriculum page. Yeah. It was so. good though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So Diane, if you could keep the principal's report like kind of broken out like that. Yes, I will. Awesome, thank you. Oh, um, I know one thing I thought of that we talked about at the last meeting, um, that the the testing results there there was going to kind of be a, there was going to be a couple steps in the process before um, before getting to sort of action items. I think was the way you said it last week that, it, the, that the staff would the data. talk about it and the, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but just to just to get an update on that at some point, um, 
So the uh, MTSS team meets. Not until October 1st. Not until October 1st. Um, there was a bit of a hold on some of the data because um, the data guru, Jean Marie, has some questions about the SBEC scores, which I don't, I don't see. So, um, yeah, I don't, I haven't gotten any answers yet, but I do know that um, there was another school <laughs> by that their SBEC numbers were not right. There was something oh, up really? with their data. So uh. I don't know what's going on if and then I I haven't heard from any of my other fellow <laughs> curriculum directors who typically deal with their SU level or their district level aspect data so I haven't heard I did hear from another one and he said he hadn't noticed anything or heard anything but he also hadn't gotten into it too far yeah but just it just as an update, uh, you know, the, all the data. Um, Angie and I went to a workshop this summer on data literacy, and um, part of using data effectively and efficiently is managing the data in yep. a way that's user friendly, yep. which we're trying to do. Yep. Um, hopefully, we'll find a better way. Cause <laughs> I spent a lot of time entering scores in, in spreadsheets oh, this God. summer, so that. But they're now all updated, and each um, teacher has access to the information they need. So yep. all the all the SBEC scores, all the TNP scores, all the <coughs> F and P, which is Fontes and Pinnell, the reading um, running record scores. Um, there are some other um, early literacy assessments that the K2 pod enters into their spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. So the hope is that, I mean, they have all the data. Yeah. Not in um, the way that I showed it to you, but they will. Um, they should be looking at that to plan their differentiated groups. Which we'll um, start working on tomorrow. Which they'll start working on tomorrow. It's a huge undertaking, honestly, yeah. because it's like they don't know where to start. Right. So it's like just pick one thing <laughs> and figure out how to provide um, intervention for all kids in a particular. I mean, you have to start small. Yeah. Um, so they do have access to the data that way, and they're they're. This is our second year of FIT, Focus Instruction Time, which is time outside the core curriculum for intervention for all kids. So yeah. that could look like enrichment to you know, remedial practice and particular skills. Um, so they do have the data. We just okay. haven't really done a deep dive. And to be honest with you, when we do the overall deep dive to look at the data, it doesn't really, I mean, we do set like a general goal Yep. Like we're noticing, I mean, last year it was um, the teachers made a, uh, they noticed, uh, I think it was um, problem solving across the board. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were embedding more problem solving into their everyday work, yep. like in morning meetings. So there are, you know, broad goals that are set around. Yep. But it is hard to it's hard. pull yeah. specific things. I it know is. when we were looking yeah. at it, we it were is. sort of like, Ooh. Yeah. yeah, it's overwhelming for yeah. many people. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, we'll. Yeah. And it has been released on the state website, so I know there you can go and like look at every school and the, you know. But um, was it in the snapshot? Because it wasn't when we were at the. It was 2018 yeah. results. 2019 were not. Maybe they haven't up. put put the 2019 up yet. And there was something like Digger did this graphic where you could go and look. At, I think those were the most recent ones. Okay. You could but it was very, it wasn't broken down at all. It was okay. just sort of your ranking almost, which is not at all helpful because right. there's no context there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, okay. But, but yeah, and you should know we do have um, a data team mm -hmm. that we've established at the SU level, so we meet every other Week. admin meeting at 7.15, and we're trying to figure out how to use how data to use it. effectively yeah. and efficiently. And uh, what to use. Broad level. And what to yeah. use, yeah. So that's what I say. Okay. All right. Awesome, guys. Um, so, does anybody have any motion? To adjourn. To adjourn. <laughs> I think that was a colleague, Beth. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I'll do the favor. Hey, uh, <laughs> Dad. Don't right. forget to buy your salsa and zucchini bread. Yes. Right. Yes. yes. And they're looking.